<laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! What is up, unidentified S4? Mr. Big Feet. Oh! Wow, you guys. Wow. This is going to be amazing, okay? We have got Adrian Reister in the gray room. That is right. I said it, you guys. He is here. He's an airman who has run into all sorts of amazingness, okay? He was working at a U.S. Air Force base, and um, he saw some UFO, a nuclear one, saw some UFO orbs and a shadow person. But as you guys know, whenever we have these big shows, I always like some backup. So I brought my girl Chris to help me co-host. Akashi, Chris, what's up? Thank you so much for coming to help me out tonight. Whoa! I'm so, so here. So she's going to help me do some of the shout outs right now. So um, I guess I'll just put somebody up and you just shout them out. All right, here we go. I'll let you go first. Go, Chris. Drugbunny.com. <laughs> Uh, a wave Saul, good to see you. John the Adventure and Bob, a wave Saul. Go, Amy. Night Nightmare, what's up, Nightmare? DJ San Marco, always a good, always a pleasure to see you. That one time I was abducted by aliens, two gorgeous bitches. You girls are two gorgeous bitches too. Yes, gorgeous did, bitches. Yes, did Chris, we it's a true. Kevin. We say hi I to think I saw him. Kevin Landon Holdridge. Uh, Bob Marley. Bob Marley. First floor audio. First floor audio. Wrote well, all of the tracks to Alia Girl 111. Welcome to the show. We love you, Coral Ann. Number oh, one oh, chat oh, moderator oh. on the internet. Good to see you. We love you. We love you. Kelly Lewis. On the rise, let's see who else we have. Mm -hmm. I think we've covered all Stewart. my <laughs> husband. Oh my god, how did I miss my husband? Um, but I did. Rogi, Rogi here? Is Rogi? Yeah, here? yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw and her. Enzo, if we say hi to Enzo, Dargate Traveler, Paul Gow, oh, Clarius Kevin, Denbub. Denbub. <laughs> Denbub. What kind of name? We came up. Feeling better. We want to say hi oh, to Bree. Oh yeah, Bree. Bree, we hope you yes. feel better, girl. We love you. We love you. Okay, you guys. It? It's coming. It's uh, Alicia, Carrie, Wyatt. Well, we got a big crowd, you guys. We haven't even started the show, and we have got fifty people in the flip and chat i love you guys go tweet this go share this we got a story a real story that we're gonna get down tonight so i want to see this go up you guys because adrian is here and he is chill man he's chill everyone's like how'd you get an interview and i was like because he's cool so that's what's going on can i say something to john hints john hints that is a box of colon blow behind me this very time on hands. Kathy Splash is here. Amy, Kathy Splash. Ooh. Kathy Splash. Oh, Kathy Splash, we love you. We love Kathy Splash. They're Spooky Morales. Spooky. Raji Report. All right, I'm getting started, Chris. Akashi, Chris, girl. Thanks for the backup. I'm going to see you in just a second. What is up, you guys? What is up? Things have been wild, have they not been? We've already got 60 people almost in the chat. Yes, because you know what? You guys, how how did you get here? How did you guys get here? I've been wondering how in the hell of the YouTube algorithm, okay? I'm really wondering, did you guys manage to find yourself here? What's up, Spooky? Spooky Morales just became a member. Thank you so much, Spooky. We love you, man. Because...
tonight we've got Adrian in the gray room. He was a U.S. airman at a nuclear base for the military. And one night he saw something he didn't ever thought that he'd see. Because you know what, you guys? We are broadcasting here live and alive in the middle of the desert, in the heart, in the heart, you guys, of alien country. And one day, it's all gonna come out, my friends. The bodies, the documents, the craft. And they're gonna say, you know what they're gonna say, you guys, come on. They're gonna say they always knew. And you're gonna say, no, I knew too, you guys, because I was listening to Alien Girl 111. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are doing it. We are here, 60 people in the chat. I'm bringing in my co-host, Akashi Chris. She's gonna help me out through this magic carpet ride of a conversation. And now we are going to bring in the one, the only, Adrian. What's up? Hello. Thank you for Hello. coming. <laughs> Oh my God. Nice How are you out. doing? Yes, Good. nice to see you too. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and your life to come do this fun little hangout with us to kind of discuss <laughs> all of the things and yeah, just have fun and kick back. Yeah, yeah, not having a problem at all. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, how have you been doing with everything? You've been going on a couple different shows. You've been sharing your experience. Mm -hmm. You've gotten like coverage suddenly, you know, your, yeah. your stories <laughs> everywhere. So what has that been like for you? It's, it's kind of been a whirlwind, you know, it's something I'm not used to. Um, <laughs> uh, otherwise it's not been too bad. There's been, I haven't had really anybody come out negatively against me so far. Um, so it's been great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what's kind of nice about the hashtag UFO Twitter community is mm -hmm. we were talking a little bit about, about it before the show is we all want to know um, it, these experiences. We're, we're dying. I, I think, you know, we, we get into this subject because we want to have the experience. We want to be connected. And if there's a way that we can know a little bit more about that, you know, um, and what's f fascinating about your story is that you are, you know, you're a U.S. airman for the Air Force mm -hmm. and you're working at an Air Force base um, working with nuclear weapons, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. Mm. Yep. We're so grateful that you're here to tell your story because, you know, with that background, you know, I, I didn't know if you you could. So this is fascinating that you can. And, you know, we're just happy that that you finally found a way to you know, get that story out. So Well, I've I've found not found a way, but there's mm -hmm. there's ways of talking about things much like Lou Elizondo does, where you cannot talk about specific things but you can kind of be vague a little bit you know mm -hmm. and i haven't really talked specifically about what we did as nuclear techs and i probably won't i probably won't touch that short of that we worked on the bombs and that was about it <laughs> well yeah and that makes sense you know um but obviously your own personal experiences are, aren't something that they are something that you could share and you know what you can share and what you can't share. And it's right. just great. Like there's so many people and people in the military who have come out and said that they've seen things and it just, it, it becomes, you know, uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and so, so, I mean, what was it? Akashi's my research girl. <laughs> I'm so excited for him to be here. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> yeah, Where do, so, what's a good What's a good question? Do you think that's good to start with? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it is where we want to take it with your experience because you had multiples, right? So you had. Um, I want to hear about everything. I don't know about you, Amy. So you know, there's the orb experiences that you had mm -hmm. earlier on. Sure. You know, leading. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to lead them to the shadow people because you know that we're going to be <laughs> touching on that a lot. But yeah, can you can you just tell us a little bit more? Because I mean, I know that you shared with a couple of people, you know, this week, but you know, kind of how how did this change you? You know, tell us a little bit about it and how. How did it kind of change your life on a daily basis? Because that's something I, I can't say I can talk to. <laughs> well, um, 
the orbs themselves when i had seen them they didn't again all this didn't really change me on a like a a daily level especially when i was in the military because you kind of just put it out of sight out of mind you know you can't mm -hmm. report it and so you just might as well not think about it you know um so as i've talked in other shows i ended up putting this kind of stuff in like the vault right mm -hmm. there's this thing in the back of your head that you just seal things away and they just disappear <laughs> And uh, so that's primarily what I did is just kind of compartmentalize them and move past them and not really. Yeah, I, I've always been interested in this topic, right? Mm -hmm. And back then I didn't, again, I, I've sp spoken to this before, that shadow people at that specific time were not something that I considered uh, UAP or phenomena related, right? Mm -hmm. I had thought or had heard that uh, shadow people were primarily considered like ghosts or the paranormal like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once, uh, what was it a year or so ago, or there was a report somewhere that as, as more things have been coming out, more shadow people have been associated with the UAP and the, the phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And that's really when I started kind of putting two and two together, you know, and I do my own research. Um, I listen to a lot of UAP shows, UFO shows, uh, on top yours included. <laughs> um, so it was- That's really so nice, thank you. <laughs> it was really after I had listened to a, a podcast that they were, had gone a little bit deeper into this uh, shadow people kind of thing. And I was like, you know, that sounds a lot like something that I went through or that I saw. And, you know, now that I think about that, then the, the vault opened, you know, and I started thinking about all these old things that I had not thought about in years and years and years. And that's when I was like, oh, wow, why I actually have a lot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Wow, man. And that's amazing. Yeah, it starts to just come out when you look at it and you start to put the pieces together. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, that's amazing. I've had this conversation with experiencers before. Yeah, it, it's a lot to process because you're like, no way. Like, <laughs> I, I, we mm -hmm. were, Chris and I were just talking about mm -hmm. that before the show. We're like, no way, no way that happened to me, you know. But um, yes. So how did that discovery process work for you? Because I'm sure you had to process that when you saw you know, the UFO, and then when you saw the entity, this shadow person. Mm -hmm. um, so when I had seen the two, at least the first orb in the sky, it was kind of, I saw, I'm I'm pretty sure I saw a UFO, you know, <laughs> like I, I'm dead sure I saw one, but it's not threatening, you know, and my specific job at that time was to assess whether there are threats or not. And, you know, if it's not a threat, out of sight, out of mind, no evidence, it's out. You know, don't worry about reporting it. Just can move on with your life. The, the less that you say, the less that you're going to have problems with later on, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you, so, can I ask you one question? Did you believe sure. in them before that one point right there? Oh, yeah. I've, like, I, I've spoken to this again uh, before as well. Like, my grandfather, uh, for as long as I can remember, was always fascinated with aliens. Um, he was of the mind that, of along the lines of ancient aliens, you know, um, mm -hmm. that they had been here for a very long time. And that we are just seeing things that just have been here with us for eons and eons. And just, you know, it was just something to him that he was fascinated about and kind of carried on with me. Okay. Cool. I'm sorry. I didn't wow. mean to interrupt. I just really wanted to know. Wow. And my this tells a big story. So keep going, please. No, no problem. Um, uh, so I guess with along with the sh the shadow person, the way I kind of justified not talking about it or just kind of putting it aside of mind is again, I have top secret clearance. And I have what they call PRP, which is Personal Reliability Program, right? And I've gotten some flack from some military guys. Oh, PRP isn't exactly something to hold your tongue about. or, But 
I was also like maybe 20 at the time, 19, 20, very young, impressionable, didn't want to rock the boat, you know, didn't want to paint a target on my back. And I just, I didn't want to be that guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, top secret clearance and PRP is not really something to play with. Um, so that's really the reason why I didn't say anything. Um, I didn't feel like I should have or could have. And that there also, on top of that, uh, we've also said this, that there was, as far as I understood, there was no reporting structure in to, to do that kind of thing, you know, to, to report, oh, there was a shadow person that I saw, or, oh, there was a UFO in the sky, you know, <laughs> without being ridiculed or being called an idiot or crazy or whatever, you know? Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's changed so much. It's changed so much. You just, so did you feel more comfortable after the New York times article came out? And I mean, after all this stuff, it's silly. Cause when did you come out? I mean, we've seen the articles, but I don't know when you've officially were publicly talking about it. And well, I only recently been publicly talking about it with the liberation times. I have never said anything before that and it was that was the first time i've actually ever said anything about what i've seen or that kind of deal um, i mean yeah and and it's just yeah it's it's interesting because um i think a lot of people see these experiences and it takes a while for them uh to process so when um so where did the shadow being come from? You know, Chris, when, when you were reading it and you were researching it, um, what kind of questions did you have like about that night? It, it was in the same night from what I read, I believe, right? It was no, two separate no. occasions. I actually had three separate occasions. Mm -hmm. um, there were two orbs that were sandwiched or the, the shadow person was actually sandwiched by the two orb uh, experiences. And the oh. first orb experience was in, I want to say, I had written down 2005, and that's around the time that I had actually seen it. And uh, the shadow person was probably around the summer of 2006. And then it was only a short few months after that that I had seen the, the third orb experience. So they yeah. were all kind of separated. Um, people have asked me if they were kind of in correlation with each other and personally i don't i don't put any correlation with these experiences other than that they are associated with the phenomena right um because they're they were separate times um they were just very different occasions as well so were the orbs at all similar though in you know, just kind of just, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Some, some people say they're orange. Some people say they're green. You know, it's like, so I'm just curious. Right. Mm -hmm. So the orbs that I had seen were like an orangish white color. Um, probably a little bit bigger than what you'd see it as, a, as like a star, you know, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Mm -hmm. Like a, maybe even a little bit bigger than a satellite, actually. But, you know, I've, I've seen... B2 bombers, I've seen F117s, I've seen A10s, I've seen helicopters, I've seen UAVs, I've seen drones, I've seen, you know, I, I worked right next to the flight lane essentially, and I saw all kinds of things take off and land and do maneuvers yes. around the base. And, uh, you know, to this, these orb experiences, I mean, I've even seen satellites, you know, I, I look in the telescope, I've seen satellites, I've seen the, the International Space Station. And this is even before Skylink or uh, not Skylink, uh, Starlink was a thing. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, they're back then, they're, you know, we still had a fair amount of satellites, but they don't maneuver the way that, you know, they don't zigzag around the sky. Yeah, so tell us, kind of that, right. you move around? Right. I, I knew you saw orbs, but I didn't know how they, you know, what right. the trajectory is. And the, so the first experience was actually when I was holding a gun, you know, um, there was a a weapon in transit to come into our facility. And it was during this time that I saw that the orb kind of bobbing over the uh, the uh, tree line that's mm -hmm. to the about just off the east of base. And uh, so, 
you know, as I'm sitting there watching this thing kind of bobbing over the tree line, I think, okay, so maybe it's a star, you know, it could be like heat waves reflecting, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I had thought it was a star as, as the, the transport team was coming in and then they started backing the weapon into our facility. And that's when this thing's shot up a good three or four inches, you know, kind of above the tree line and kind of hung up there again for a little bit. And it was only after we had secured it actually within the building that this thing kind of shot off to the left, which was uh, north, north. At the yeah, it was north. And then a 90 degrees straight up and just poof, disappeared. And when I say, I, I go on to say that when it poof disappeared, it's not so much that it went so far that I couldn't see it anymore. It just disappeared. Right. It just poof disappeared. <laughs> wow. Oh, like in place, not like, yes. wow. Right, right. So, and that was the actual first time I had seen uh, a, a UAP on base or you know, and my experience in the military. Um, and so the, the third experience with the orb or the, you know, was really anything like that. This time I was looking off to the west side of base. Um, and from what I remember, there's like a some kind of national forest, I think, national park right mm -hmm. off side of base out there. And that's where I kind of guesstimate where this thing was at kind of above and it was only just pulsing for a little bit and then again, just poof and gone. So again, I I don't really wanna say that that was a UFO, you know, because it didn't move, it didn't exhibit any strangeness, you know, other than just disappearing, right? Um, I was a 2W231 at the time to, Answer DJ San Marcos's yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> DJ San Marcos, thank you for the ten dollars super chat. He says, "Adrian, my bro, what base did this occur at? And what was your AFSC and Whiteman Air Force Base? Whiteman right, Air Force Base. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was a two W two. Um, and so like those orb experiences, they those were the only two that I experienced on base. Um, no, the shadow person. I want to say is kind of a little bit more hair raising, you know, <laughs> uh, you think, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the time it was, it was a little scary, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't really know what the hell I was seeing. Um, and it was only really after I had kind of looked and then I had to take a second look again, you know, after I'd heard the, 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 the sounds again, you know, the barefoot on the ground. And that's when I had st stood up and started booking after this thing. And it took off down the, the, the wall and kind of cut into the admin section. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people ask me if I had, I smelled anything that night and I couldn't, nothing comes to mind, you know, like nothing out of the ordinary, you know, um, nothing there were no like f fuzzy electrical pulses or the lights weren't flickering or nothing strange like that either. It was just this dark, completely black shadow, <laughs> fuzzy shape of a person just standing there for a split second before I got up and started chasing after it. And that was, really, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just think it's great you chased after it that you just didn't you just weren't like whoa like you went after it <laughs> oh yeah well, you know, you're like what is that our, come back yeah. <laughs> exactly I, because yes bays are very well lit you know it's it's very hard to do maintenance on nuclear weapons when you can't see what you're doing <laughs> yeah so it's not like yeah it's, it's super like, bright it's not like a dark tunnel like it's not right. like a little hall a high you know like a little alleyway or something like that this is like those bright lights that you see in the movies and they're on the bases. So you could see everything. And mm -hmm. there's a shadow person there. Now what trips mm -hmm. me out about the story too, that I want to hear about is the little tapping of the feet. Cause I think that you described it like bare feet on a pool. Like people yes. walk and tell me, I want to hear it. I'm like, this is like, so this is creepy. This is crazy. At, at, at the beginning of this instance, right. Um, I'm 
doing what they are. I'm uh, assigned in what they call weapon support. Um, essentially, we issue toolboxes, uh, chemicals, gloves, pretty much everything that the training crew at, on at time or at the, that specific time uh, needed for their training purposes, you know. And so, you know, sitting there, they were in the back bay. Um, whenever there's a training crew that is has a bomb or a training bomb open, we lock the building up because it's still classified information that's being handled, you know. And uh, so I'm just sitting by myself in weapon support, training crews in the training bay. And uh, that's when, you know, about one or two in the morning, you know, I'm on the computer just doing whatever I'm doing. And that's when I hear what I thought was sounded like water dripping, which, you know, if could have been barefoot at the time, you know, it, it sounded like barefoot as well. Um, just that kind of wet feet on painted concrete, if you've ever heard that, essentially. Um, and so we have an eye wash station, you know, and, and a, an emergency shower station. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that kind of thing. Um, and so the first time that I heard this sound, I had turned around to go look at the, the eye wash station, right? And I could see that it wasn't dripping so i must obviously be hearing things you know <laughs> i'm going crazy or something you know <laughs> and uh, so i go back to uh doing whatever i'm doing on the computer and you know no more than a minute or two passes and i hear that same sound again this time it's kind of a little bit louder and this time it's it sounds like it's barefoot walking away from the support section where i was at and that's when i was like that doesn't sound like combat boots and it has like that cadence of somebody walking you know so that's when i i stood up and i turned around to go look and that's when i had seen you know the the shape of a person in a shadow you know essentially i don't know if you guys have ever seen the uh there's a a color or a pigment now that is essentially the blackest of blacks kind of and it, it essentially absorbs all light. And that's basically what I saw, this, that per, that specific color. Wow. And because it, people ask me if this is, thing has been translucent or not, and it, it wasn't. It was, it was very opaque. It was very opaque towards, like, especially the middle. And, you know, towards the edges, you know, yeah, it was a little translucent, but that's mostly because it was blurry or, like, it's... I want to say pixelated, but not like digital pixelation, just fuzzy, blurry kind of, you know, I, blurry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of focus. Uh, yeah. And that's essentially what, what I had seen. Uh, and that's when it yeah. booked it down the, you know, that stretch of wall and turned the corner into the admin section. And I chased after it, turned the corner, passed it, and I couldn't hear it i couldn't see it anymore it as far as i was con knew that it had completely disappeared and at that point in time it's on me my proof of burden on to find this fucking thing wherever it's at you know <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah you're, at a different <laughs> space. you're like you're i gotta take this thing out right. I found something weird <clears throat> on the face you guys yeah <laughs> wow yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, people also ask you know were you armed at this time and you know, no, we don't arm unless there's like an actual asset in our building or in transit, essentially, you know. And uh, so, no, I was not armed as I was looking for this thing. <laughs> I probably should have been. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's only so many mounted places in our admin section to look in. There was, you know, a handful of offices. There was a snack room. There was a conference room. And there was you know, kind of a lunch room or a break room. And that was it. There was. Wow. And the only way in and out of that building at that particular time was through our main entrance, which was, I don't know if you guys know what an airlock system or airlock style door is, is essentially yeah. you come through know. a first set of doors, right? Yeah. And then you have to sit or wait in like a little antechamber or whatever for somebody to let you into another set of doors. 
to actually get into a building. So there's right? two doors in this deal. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got to go through one and then another in order to actually get into a building. And in order for you to get out, you also have to exit the same way through both doors. And it's <laughs> very noisy to do so. <laughs> and so, crazy. yeah. No. The, the fact that you had <clears throat> the whole water dripping and the tapping of the feet and the fact that it wasn't necessarily translucent, but it wasn't all there. That just right. it it's kind of trippy, like ultra dimensional to me. Like you were seeing something that and was, you know, I've you know, it's in another realm and somehow for a second and you as, saw as it I and, do my own research or as I listen to other podcasts or more experts out there, experts. Mm -hmm. Um especially in terms of like Skinwalker Ranch, you know, mm -hmm. they experience a lot of shadow people there, you know, and they also associate shadow people there with, you know, their UFOs or UAP phenomenon. And that's from, really from where I kind of linked this thing, you know, and in my, my own estimation, my own opinion, I, I'm not going to, I'm not an expert, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> believe me, don't make i would strongly suggest people to do their own research you know mm -hmm. but to me um i often feel like shadow people when they talk about ghosts shadow people and uap shadow people are kind of one the same kind of deal essentially and it mm -hmm. feels like it's very like a dimensional or universal kind of thing i again this is my own opinion yeah this is my own opinion yeah. I could be very wrong, <laughs> no. <clears throat> but the uh, ultra dimensional, multi-dimensional changes the game completely because, you exactly. know, it's like, is it where does paranormal end and UAP start? I, yeah. Ooh, okay. Right. Right. Back to you, Amy, girl. <laughs> no, it's it's dimensional. It's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. and we got. I, I, I'm I'm just nodding because I just uh, so the more I do the sh the show and I talk to more people like you, Adrian, and you, Chris, I put the pieces together in my on my own little experience, and it just trips me out. That's when I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, but thank you, Lee, for the four ninety nine uh super chat. Really appreciate it. He has a question for you, Adrian. Uh, did you know anyone that had similar experiences on other bases? The few experiences I had happened to me on an air base, and they are very, very similar. Um, as far as I know, nobody had similar experiences on other bases. Um, I know that there is a, a couple of security forces officers out there. Um, that spoke up about their involvement at Nellis. Uh, George Knapp, I think, reported that a little while ago. Um, but other than that, not really. Um, now, recently, I did get in contact with somebody, you know, one of my old military friends, and we were, you know, shooting the shit through the night. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why are you, you know? <laughs> and so, Why are you talking about those aliens, Patriot? Right. <laughs> like, you know, now that I remember it, I also kind of remember those kind of things. So, you know, I'm sure there are people that have experienced these things, you know, I'm sure. But again, in, in my attempt at doing this or my way of trying to, get this out i want to try and pave a big enough path or make a way for people to be able to ex speak about their experiences especially people that have top secret clearances or prp or you know that don't feel like they can talk about these things without a certain amount of ridicule and there is there is quite amount ridicule in, <laughs> yeah. our, in the, especially within the military and yeah. so you know it's just trying to help them out you know <laughs> mm -hmm. yes yes and it's uh, you know and that's what's fascinating and i think that's what's just kind of like happened to people they're ready to talk about it they're ready to say and i think it's beautiful because it's like the more experiences i hear that are similar to mine or like like with you the orbs i have seen orbs as well so that's another reason i'm sitting here i'm like whoa because i have seen 
orbs. <laughs> and so whenever you get to go talk to other people and see what their experience is, it, it, it makes it makes it like instead of being like, wow, I, I'm absolutely crazy. Like, I can't believe what I just saw. Everyone thinks I'm crazy, you know, I'm going down like that weird rabbit hole. Yay. <laughs> oh, and then it's this verse like talking to you, Adrian, and being like, yeah, so that's cool. You saw orbs. I've seen some too. You know, it's interesting. Let's right. <laughs> drink some coffee and talk about it and kick back. And people start mm -hmm. to feel good. And the more people feel good, like the more all this information comes out. And I feel like the pieces are coming together with whatever the hell's going on. I feel like it's coming together by stories and the bravery of people like you, Adrian, to come forward and talk about it. And Gary, Gary's in the chat. We love you, yes. Gary. Yeah. And he says a lot of military will just repress weird shit or make fun yeah. of you for it. Yeah. They will make fun of you for it. <laughs> that's, that's a shame. Um, so, so you haven't had, so ever, so you had the two, the first orb, the shadow person, and then the uh, Second, the third. the third instance, which was the orb, that just... you haven't experienced anything since. No. So, do you do you meditate? Do you do a lot? I mean, just curious. Just I used to. I'm kind of out of practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, every once in a while, you know, if I get a wild hair, I'll, I kind of just, you know, pause everything yeah. and just take a minute for myself. But uh, not, I wouldn't say meditation you know okay i was trying to figure out it's like okay so where, where's the link it's like you know <laughs> of obviously you were at the military base mm -hmm. and you were with the nuclear bombs which probably had a lot to do with it yeah you know i just i try to keep an open mind just about everything um as as uh john ramirez has said very eloquently kind of embrace widely hold lightly you know and I kind of, I 100% agree with that. <laughs> That's a really good motto. Gosh. Yes. I mean, especially, you know, you got John Ramirez coming out and like, the, like I was saying, the little, like the alien hybridization program, I've been talking about that for years. It's one of my favorite mm -hmm. theories and ufology legends, you know, and then John came out and he was like, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. And I was like, what? Yeah, it's kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a thing. So Alicia Carey, uh, Alicia Carey, uh, Wyatt, we love you. Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Super sweet of you. Thank you. Her question is, was the shadow actually like 3D black and entity versus just a shadow being cast off a wall. Can I answer real quickly so you don't have to repeat sure. yourself? And then, so we were talking earlier about this. And if you, you know, if you look at Air Force bases and you see, you know, the machinery and the things that they're working on, it's always covered in light. So all you guys got to do is think about like the military and an Air Force base at night in a movie. There's tons of lights. And I mean, it was right there. It looked pixelated. I won't want to talk anymore. I'm just trying to say word for word what you're saying, Adrian, but I don't want you to have to repeat yourself. So um, what do you think about that? You know, was it more because I, I know it wasn't cast off a wall, but was because you said pixelated. So like 3D, maybe like 3D ish. Yes, it was 3D because it had, you know, as it turned the corner i could see that it would you know it, it changed shape so it it was 3d it just looked flat because of the the color of it you know it was essentially absorbing all light kind of deal you know so it looked flat but it was a 3d object and i'll go even further because you know it's through talking about this that i'm actually the kind of uh, reanalyze what I saw, you know, and as I'm playing this thing in my head, I, people have asked if it was floating or that kind of deal. And no, it wasn't. It was actually using its, its legs to run or move or, or, or have some kind of locomotion. Right. And I can only assume that if it's using legs, then gravity affects it. Right. So it was also a physical object, at, at least enough to where gravity would affect it. And you heard, you know, kind of with the motion, you actually had the sound. So yes. it wasn't like something floating. Yes. So that it, so the sounds may kind of match the motion, the kind of the general movement. 
I know I I'm getting like really. <laughs> no, you, no, that's, uh, that is a really good question. Uh, that is a really good question. Mm -hmm. And you know, as I was chasing this thing, I didn't really, it didn't occur to me or I didn't notice if it was making any sound as I was chasing after it. Mm -hmm. Because at that point I was, I was, I was in shock essentially, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> as I was totally. chasing after this thing, I was in shock and, you know, kind of a little bit scared, you know? And so I probably should have, I don't, I can't give you a good enough answer. I don't, I couldn't tell you if, if it was still making sound or not. I would assume it was, if it was already making sound, I would assume it would be continuing to make the sound, you know, but I couldn't tell you if it was still doing it. <laughs> I mean, let me ask you a follow-up question. How long did it take you to sleep after that? <laughs> like, how many nights did it take you to be able to sleep after seeing a shadow person? Because I can't. I, I want to know that. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen the show called Adventure Time, right? And this is where mm -hmm. I get the vault from. And mm -hmm. this is where... I can take things essentially, compartmentalize them and just shove them in the vault and they don't, I'm sure they do, but waking, they don't bother me. You know, I, I am an insomniac, so I'm sure that's some way it comes up, you know, that yeah. I don't sleep very well kind of deal, right? <laughs> I'm just saying that would change. I mean, if I saw something like this, I just, I just can't can put myself because that's one of the <laughs> things that you don't know until you cool. see it and then you go oh that's what that feels like you know so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you mm -hmm. think amy i want to know like about um the orbs do you feel like you're psychically opened when you saw the orbs i mean maybe maybe not i don't know you seem like you do like you know like you meditate a little bit you know i mean you're open-minded like I don't know. Like, do you think maybe you have a heightened sense for these sort of experiences? Well, if it, it's, it's a strong possibility, I could be, but I would also say that I have not seen any orbs since then. So it could be my own deal that I haven't been attracting that kind of thing, you know, or maybe I'm not putting as much energy into it as I could be, or I'm not, you know, I don't know what I did back then to, to need or to ha be able to see such fantastical things, or if it was just kind of a freak encounter that they were there and I was there at the same time, you know, um, I don't well, know. the fact that it's a nuclear base, the fact that it's a yeah. nuclear base onto itself is enough to be like, wow. And actually, it adds, I think, more validity to your argument or not to your argument, to your experience, sorry, to mm -hmm. your experience, because you didn't see him afterwards. And most soldiers and military people, there's tons of stories that correlate to what you're saying with that. And I think that's what really stirs people up about is that are like, wow, he saw the orbs and a shadow person. Um, you know, and I think it's different for every, for everybody, right? Like, cause some people mm -hmm. do the CE5 and they can attract mm -hmm. the orbs. Um, and it could be but, a combination of factors cause it mm -hmm. could be location and, you know, um, you know, and, and potentially some, you know, I'm, I'm lost my train of thought on this one. You know, it could be, it could not just be location. It could be you know, location and maybe your sense of awareness. That's where I was going. Mm -hmm. You worked at a nuclear base. You were uber aware. You had to be. You're like mm -hmm. on the defense. So it could be a combination of the location that you're in and your own awareness. I mean, you talked about, I think, your family and, mm -hmm. you know, more ancient um, ancient uh, civilizations and thinking mm -hmm. being kind of into Earth. Maybe during that time you had that, you know, you had a connection, you know, it's very so possible. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. Then I lost my train of thought while I was playing and it didn't make any sense, but I'm back. <laughs> no, I will go on to say, I haven't really gone out of my way to go look at orbs or UFOs, you know, mm -hmm. um, I do look up from time to time, you know, I kind of anything up there, but, uh, you know, if, Honestly, if I could, I, I would. I would go look for UFOs all day long if they paid me. <laughs> you know? Yes. 
Yes, if they're out there mm-hmm. and they're following you like that, and you know, like got some good cameras if they're around mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, and the whole, you know, military connection and all the all the stuff that you've done in the military. And Gary Voorhees is in the chat right now and he's mm-hmm. throwing some little stuff out there too about Sandy. I know, I'm looking. Some Tennessee interesting law. stuff, you know, mm-hmm. when he UAPX. saw the Tic Tac. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, UAPX. They're doing some amazing citizen research. I'm really um, looking forward to all that information coming out. <laughs> yes. Well, the process is what's so surreal, mm-hmm. right? They're trying to only release peer-reviewed stuff. I think all of them are military guys, too. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. they really want to ensure that credibility. But that's how, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, all of the wonderful military people who come out and share their stories. Um it just adds so much and also like one touch away from the government, like you're working for the government. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so you have an inside sort of understanding. So what's kind of cool is, you know, we have the Tic Tac, the Tic Tac videos, right? Right. What do you think about those? Like, what did you think when that came out? And man, (laughs) (laughs) when that first came out with, with uh, David Fravor, I, I was pretty glued to the screen <laughs> you know i i watched those videos you know quite extensively repeat you know back after back kind of analyzing them myself and along with everybody else's analyzations of it uh chris leto does some really great explanations and mm-hmm. great great analytics on it um and so when when i had watched these things you know i maybe it would make sense if if a tic tac could be about the shape of an orb, you know, maybe it could reflecting light or something kind of deal, right? But you know, these tic tacs are. I think people need to take more seriously. They seem to be everywhere, you know, um, fairly consistently findable kind of deal, you know, um, just crazy. <laughs> it's totally crazy and I mean, they just did it at such a weird point nobody was paying attention and they're mm-hmm. like oh aliens are real mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I was like the world's ending the mm-hmm. world is obviously ending right now but it didn't and we keep going and more stuff keeps coming out and like so what did you so so uh skinwalkers mm-hmm. at the pentagon have you heard of that book I have it's it's actually in my next book I want to purchase for myself to read um right now i'm getting through uh in plain sight by ross coltart great great book you know not that i'm on here to speak about other people's stuff no, you know, well, that's but... what we all do. this is what we all this we all know who he, we all know who he is and you know it's just kind of a fun thing to include all of that information so yeah um but yeah the skinwalkers so you heard of it a little bit harry mm-hmm. reed and um, what else have you heard about the book and what what do you think about it just from hearing about it? From what I gather, it's essentially they're just talking about all these different cases that they've experienced at I, what I imagine Skinwalker Ranch, you know, and along right. with every other place that maybe NIDS, uh, was it the National Institute of Discovery mm-hmm. Science, right? Um, yeah. What presenting as they found. Uh, Bigelow's. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, on top of that, ATIP and OSAP, you know, there's so much information there that wasn't ever given out or looked at or reviewed or anything. And, and with uh, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, I'm sure, uh, like I said, I haven't read the book. Um, right, right, right. And, <laughs> and it, well, the guy has an orb experience in it because when he's at Skinwalker Ranch, he goes back home and his wife sees orbs and they see an upright uh Woof! What? Oh, right. like the uh, the hitchhiker experiences. Right? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. And then um, yeah, Harry cause... Reid wrote the intro, and he was like, "This is. I think aliens are real. Like, I'm mm-hmm. Mormon. We think alien. Like, the other people from other planets are real. That's why I think this is legit." And then they went into all of the crazy stuff at Skinwalker Ranch, mm-hmm. and. Uh, my my mind gets boggled every time I think of Skinwalker Ranch, and that's why I like your story so much is because what's going on right <laughs> you know, like you hear your story and it's like wait, right. wait 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 what's wait what's going on well you kind of touched on it earlier right you were talking about the shadow you almost said the did you mention 
like some sort of reference Ranch. between mm -hmm. Skinwalker Ranch and Shadow People because mm -hmm. it's kind of all in the They same. also experience so, Shadow People there at the Skinwalker Ranch. And mm -hmm. the way they describe the Shadow People there is also what kind of what I remember experiencing at Whiteman. And that's kind of where I mm -hmm. correlated the two, you yeah. know. There's otherwise, so much stuff. I love that ranch. It's a living lab. I'm like, yeah, I otherwise, want to go. I would never have associated shadow people with UAP or the phenomenon or Skinwalker Ranch, even if they had not talked about shadow people. Because, like I said, shadow people to me were ghost phenomena, you know. And yeah. I, I watched Ghost Hunters as a kid, or not as a kid, as a young adult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, that's that's where I picked up the lingo of of uh, shadow person. Let me ask you one thing on the shadow person. So mm -hmm. when when you uh, say he, when the shadow person was there, you know, did you have any? I mean, did you get any sense for bad energy, or did you get? I mean, besides the fact that some creepy mass thing is standing right there, and you're mm -hmm. in a nuclear facility, but did you get any mm -hmm. sense at all of like some some overwhelming negative? feelings or anything that it, I know it's probably no. kind of hard to divide the two. You know, yeah. Um, self. I mean, at the time I felt a <laughs> lot of panic. Uh, you know, obviously this, no. this thing inside a secured nuclear facility. <laughs> so mm -hmm. obviously I'm going to be panicked. Um, but as far as like negative or malicious energy or like that, that's what I'm I can't say that I felt that. And mm -hmm. people often ask me, or or I've been often asked uh, if I feel like this is a threat narrative or threatening. And no, I wouldn't say I felt threatened. It had the possibility to be threatening. I mean, mm -hmm. if there's this thing that's suddenly mm -hmm. appearing out of mid nowhere and a, a secured facility, then yeah, that's very obviously it could it could potentially be a very big threat, you know. Yeah. But rather, if it was or not, I couldn't tell you, you know. Yeah. Um, it wasn't malicious. It didn't hurt me, you know. If it wanted to, it probably could have. So. So you didn't sense energy either, like, you know, a lot of people say that they're, you know, when the phenomenon's around that they can feel like they can sense some kind of magnetic energy or anything like mm -hmm. that. Nothing like that. It was just, and it was probably happening so fast. I don't even know how you can sort all that through. I mean, I'm yeah. just, I'd be <laughs> Again, <sitting out. laughs> it, Essentially. <laughs> At the time I was, I was, I was pretty creeped out and, you know, I had a cold sweat and then I kind of, pulled myself together and was like, well, I don't have anything to show for it. Uh, there's not been any sensors. Well, we you know, there's not been any doors open. No security forces are rolling up telling me, hey, there's your your building's been breached. So I couldn't really say anything. And then I was like, OK, well, out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. What do, what do you know? We have one of our friends here. It's Gary Voorhees, president of UAPX. Oh, Welcome to the show, Gary. How are you? Can you hear us? Gary. Gary. Uh-oh. <laughs> Gary. Um, uh, 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 hi. <laughs> I guess he's just figuring out some tech stuff. But yeah, um, yeah oh, Gary's fine. here. Oh, he hears us. Okay. Is, but he's but um. Because I know you can only, you know, chill for a little bit, Adrian, but I thought, you know, we could kick back. Um, we're going to, you know, pick up some StreamYard calls, but, you know, no pressure. Uh, sure. We know everybody has lives. Uh, but, you know, I just, I'm so happy you came on, especially mm -hmm. to talk about the things that, that you saw. Um, because it's, it's going to help somebody out there. It's, you know, uh, we're all just this wild, crazy hashtag UFO family, hashtag blah, 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 whatever. And um, I think the reason it's so popular and the reason we all want to connect so much is we just want someone to hear it. We just want someone to like say, you know what, you're legit. You're a legit person. 
and I believe you. And cause I've had an experience too. So, you know, everybody's super thankful, um, for you and for your service. Uh, people are just so happy, you know, <laughs> that you're here. So, you know, thanks for, for coming on the show and, um, Thank just let me know me. when you gotta let me know when you gotta head out so I can play some techno music and <laughs> you know let you exit properly, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> you just put in the private chat or tell me you're ready to go. I, I um, think you're inspirational because if if others, you know, the more people like you speak out, and the more others are gonna feel, you know, you start to wipe out that mm. stigma. So mm. you know, I think it's fantastic. Mm. I hope a yeah, lot of more follow suit, yes. you know. <laughs> He's here, Gary. Hey, Where he? Yeah, and that's really Good. essentially what I've been trying to get this out is I all I really want is the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody else wants the truth and they kind of deserve it, you know. <laughs> yeah. After this. And the long. more data, the better. I mean, these are things it's like if if nobody reports it, then there's no data to report. If there's no data to report, there's no data to analyze. So it's like if people don't talk, we don't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, thank you, Amy. Yeah, hey, shadow thank band. you so much. And, and now we've got I, uh, Gary's here. Gary came back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Gary. You came back. Thank you. Welcome again. Yeah, I was having technical issues. I got uh, these these razor hammerhead earbuds instead of my normal big mic. So I'm just trying to. I'm as you can tell, I'm not at home. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. You're out and you, what are you, you're working on a project or, uh, right? No, I just want to um, try to gather from your Twitter feed. I am in Boston. Um, I'm actually part of a uh, PTS treatment program called Home Base. And I started on Tuesday, but uh, they flew me out uh, yesterday. So. Very cool. Good luck, brother. Very yeah, cool. But I will be yeah. going live. Uh, at the end of each day to talk about PTSD for, you know, uh, you know, people like yourself, Adrian, and, you know, people that, you know, combat veterans, uh, people that, you know, I know a lot of guys like myself that, you know, I was a computer technician in the service, but a computer technician for a weapon system that killed hundreds and hundreds of people during a war. So I'm so glad you're back. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, the, yeah. it's the things that you don't think about at the time when you're, when, you know, it's like when you asked him the question, uh, you know, when did he go to, you know, did he get, when, when was the first time he was able to sleep after this? And I'm like, he probably slept like a baby that night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you, yeah. Yeah. You were saying some stuff in the chat about your own experience and how, you know, you had, just interesting, yeah. No, he's not alone, man. Times. I mean, this shit happens, especially out at sea on these boats and stuff. Uh, you know, it's like you're running down a bulkhead, and then, like, you see some shit out of the corner of your eye. You get over there. I mean, you know for certain there's somebody there. You're, like, trying to figure out who the hell is in your P-Way, you know, and it's like, you know, the red lights are on because it's after hours, and, uh, you know, and nope, not a damn thing there. It kind of, mm -hmm. kind of creeps you the fuck out, and you're like, oh, "Son of a bitch!" All right, I'm mm -hmm. going back in my locked space. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. it's just the stuff that you know the people in the military have to go through, and just so thankful for both of your service. And you know, it's those things that are happening at the verge of the government with this, with all of the things that are that are coming out, and. Both of you are just making so many amazing things to to help push this, um, and everybody's super, you know, super happy about it. So let's see here. We've got some some questions I think here that people yeah. have into chat. Well, yeah, Paul just wants to say hand clappies to Gary. You're a good lad. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's, see, let's keep the focus on the guest. I'm, I'm just popping on here to bullshit with this okay. guy because he, he's interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, you know, this is just, uh, you know, I'll pop in and out and then I'll go back to watching the show. But, you know, I just wanted to come on and let you know, you know, you're not the only one that sees, you know, a lot of weird shit and you're not alone, you know. So thank you, man. Yeah, I've never seen a full blown, you know, actual man shadow walking around. So, you know, I can only <laughs> say, you know, it might be possible never happened to me so it's just like fortunately i gotta be like the million other people and say i believe you believe something happened but you know but either way it's still pretty fucking traumatic so we can swear on your channel can't we yeah 
Of okay, course, Gary, you can do anything you want on my channel. You can do Gary, you can just go wild. You can do Gary's full reign of the show. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, Gary, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you got any, and matter of fact, Adrian, uh, she said you, you know, you're a fan of the company and stuff. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you got any, you know, questions, just ask while we're chilling in here. But either way, I'm going to mute myself and let you guys both get, <laughs> I'll just pop in every once in a while with a comment. Sure. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, Gary's right. a good man. We're happy he's here to kind of support stuff. But um, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I'm going through you the know. chat to see if we have any questions. I know, because I'm like, how much longer There's do we have? There's a lot of him? comments. There's a lot of people in the chat. But I'm telling you, I'm I know. Going through the so questions. What? I know. People are going, they're going nuts, man. Yeah. Is it possible that you saw as much as you would have allowed? I'm trying to look for right, this much the entity. Yeah. Interesting. This is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. Um, so is it possible you saw as much as your mind would allow you, which is interesting, or as much as the entity would allow to preserve your own mind? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean that's kind of it's kind of a difficult thing to judge whether it's allowing me to see how much I can see without going crazy kind of deal. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's this possibility is a very strong possibility. That's why we can't see shadow people, right? Because they're blocking out whatever it is that they actually look like. But um, this didn't feel like it was and I, I, I can't say that I've ever f had some, but something intentionally try to block my vision from like my brain or something, you know. Um, but it also didn't feel like there was something in my head. I don't know if it, that's mm -hmm. it's really very pretty far out there. Um, so it's no. <laughs> right right it's kind of yeah and, and i and i feel that yeah because when you're like I, yeah because i mean you know you have these experiences and that's like the first thing i like I, people think is like am i crazy like what the what just happened that was right. surreal how do i process that you know and i think when people get to the point where you're at or gary's at or you know me and chris are at it's just like we've already been through that process so many times of being like was i crazy was i crazy you know, mm -hmm. and when you can prove yourself time and time again, and you also have all those correlations between military bases and nuclear things, and then you see things, it's just, it's, it's kind of part of, part of the dealio. Um, and I mean, so that's what's so fascinating about coming it's through. It's the same stories. Yeah. There's so many, it's just the similarities in them. And I know you can say one costs the other, you can do all that. But if you look overall, it's like, there's some crazy stuff going on, man. You know, and how how deep does that rabbit hole go? Because the deeper shadow than you can find. Open oh, yeah. Something completely different. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a brand new game, you know. I, I did have a couple of thoughts on, you know, exactly, you know, because like I've never witnessed it myself, but you know, hearing a lot of different kind of accounts of, you know, shadow people, slim man, uh, seeing owls, seeing, you know. Um, basically just perception, you know, being changed, um, you know, it's with the, with the, with the slender man and with the, uh, shadow people, you know, it's like, I watched this movie one time and I know it's kind of cliche, but it got me thinking. And then in this movie, they were shadow people because they weren't from our, our, our dimension. Like they were trying to enter our dimension and they were, you just couldn't perceive what they actually looked like. So this is just what your mind put together as a, you know, this is all you can, your mind can even understand. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I thought, well, you know, is, you know, is this, you know, more tied in and related with everything, uh, you know, the owls, the, you know, all the different weird things that people mm -hmm. say that they see or perceive or they have like an, you know, an intuition about, uh, you know, it could be that, you know, whatever is going on can change your perception to whatever it wants or uses what's already there to let you perceive whatever your mind can conceive. You know, you, you actually end up conceiving what it is, but they're actively changing your perception. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, it, you know, I've told, I've said this before in other podcasts. You know, the, the perception that you think you see is really just a synaptic response from your your eyes to your brain. Your brain is what perceives what's going on around you mm-hmm. via your input devices. So mm-hmm. all they got to do is interrupt that signal, right. and they can make you see anything you want, which is kind of scary. And it's not as easy as that, but it's you know still exactly what it is. It's just a signal that goes to your brain. So. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm, I'm wondering, now that you bring that up, I'll go ahead and ask you. So I'm wondering, do we look like shadow people to somebody in a different dimension? Well, or, the, or do we think look like orbs? Because dimension. we don't know. We know what we perceive ourselves as. Well, but imagine what somebody we don't from know the what other people or... perceive us as or other dimensions. You know, for a shadow person to us, maybe when they look at us, they're like, ah, what hmm. the heck is that? You know, they... That kind of trips me out. Hmm. Well, think about it this out. way, though. You look look down in dimensions from where you're at now. When you look at a two dimensional object, like say, technically, when we're looking at each other on these screens, it's two dimensional. But more realistically, like a cartoon that's uh, driven drawn in two dimensions, where you mm-hmm. know it, you know you can go over, but you can't go through because there's only mm-hmm. two dimensions. You know, mm-hmm. there's only up and down, left and right, so you can't go forward, back, left or right. There's no perception of that in the second dimension. So they have no way of understanding what three-dimensional beings are, where we don't know, we can't perceive what a four-dimensional being is, or even above. You can think it, and you can kind of get a yeah. grasp of an idea of what it might be, but... You know what does a being look like that has time as a dimension where it can it where it can go mm-hmm. forward or back in time just like we walk down the street, you mm-hmm. know, and that could be something else we're dealing with. Too. You know, I mean, these are just really wild, wild ideas. But you know, th- there's no actual basis or proof for any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just right speculation, and wild, speculation and wild thinking, and just kind of making your brain think about outside the box a little bit, and so. You know, I, there's so oh, much I to think this. that way. I think it's kind of healthy. You know, well, I had to get unhealthy to think that way. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I hear you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's not good, but we're glad. Uh, you're sometimes here. you got to break your mind to understand things. So that's that's definitely what happened for most yeah. of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amy, you want to? Yeah, well, I mean, I just sit back and I just, I'm just in so much, I'm just, I, I'm just so happy that everybody's here and that we're talking about this. We almost have a hundred people in the chat. Um, and and it comes down no, no, we're at like 86, we're about to hit 90. I'm sure we'll get to a hundred in just a second. And, um, and I'm just sitting here thinking back, like, you know, everybody, everybody here who's hanging out with us right now understands what what this is like what this is like to have an experience and to have people question it and i'm just like this ufology has come a long way especially Mm -hmm. since 2017 you know it was deep and dark and scary and oh nobody wanted to talk about it and now you've got like your local politician like i'm in new mexico heinrich Mm -hmm. he's talking about it he's he was part of the gildebrand amendment demodius uh (laughs) string theory is garbage just to let you know (laughs) <laughs> but but there are certain part there are certain parts of it that are i'm reading the chat while while i'm listening to you guys oh okay i'm like wait a second who said what about string theory <laughs> i get very protective i don't know why <laughs> but uh no it's uh so how long were you stationed at that base adrian well i know i said from 2003 to 2007 but if you you know you know military there's training times uh i didn't get into base until like 2004. So was that your first by... was that your first command yeah that was my first my first and only <laughs> now was this a pretty regular thing the entire time you were stationed there or was there um any new personnel that came on board that, that you would have known that where it started and then when they left it stopped uh was there, you know, any new new equipment, new divisions, anything that you would have been a privy to, which I know, you know, need to know, but you know, we, we both know rumor mills happen. So I know there's probably things you didn't mm-hmm. think about. I 
I mean, we constantly had people going in and out of, uh, you know, our, our shop. Um, just people either going TDY or getting cut orders for other bases. Um, there wasn't really any... Now, explain TDY for the non-military uh, fight folks. <laughs> uh, TDY is a tour of duty. Um, okay. Essentially, especially within uh, the nuclear career field, what they send people overseas to maintain weapons overseas. And then, you know, after like six months, they come back and sometimes so they, they go to a new base. It, or... It's a te temporary active duty to another place. Yes. Uh, I used to have to go f help fix uh, other radar systems and, and uh, fire control computers and stuff like that. So they would s just send me temporarily to this other place, help them fix it. And then you go back. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, TD TDI is or TDI. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, you know, other than I couldn't put any correlation there on whether that was a thing affecting what I was seeing up in the sky and the shadow person. Um, I can't really talk about new things with the weapons. I am. Um, no, understandable. Well, you don't have to go into that. I was thinking more of uh, <laughs> you just—it's just more like, a, like there, yes, there was a new project, but you know, we can't talk about it. And you know, that's a, that's a perfectly good answer. But what I'm trying to do is like trying to make a correlation. Like, did it happen just on and off the entire time you were there, or did it seem to start at one point and then stop at one point, or was it just an isolated like section of time? they were all isolated instances man like they weren't really like i couldn't go outside every friday night and see a uap in the sky kind of deal um now it could have happened that way and i just wasn't outside to see it or it was in a different area or a different spot and i didn't see it um i don't know anybody else that saw these orbs that told me about it or we're talking about it um now there there were people that often talked about like feeling that there were ghosts around or like, or like that kind of watched that kind of th thing yes mm -hmm. um I, i'm not going to give any names you know but uh, are you able to give us what installation this is still also whiteman air force whiteman? base okay mm -hmm. Well, uh, what I would probably do is, uh, you know, part of your research, I would look up the history of the land that they built it on, because a lot of times, you know, military bases will be built on really cheap land that they may or may not have acquired legally. Because mm -hmm. look at Long Beach, uh, you know, Long Beach base, they literally pushed out everybody that was living there and then built the base. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were people that were Japanese and national, uh, Japanese Americans that were, that had businesses all up and down that, that area that were literally just, they just took the businesses, put them in camps and just mm -hmm. built the base. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a, it's a black eye in our history, but it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it would be, have to be something I would, I would uh, research a little bit more into. Um, I do know that the 509th bomber wing is also the same bomber wing that recovered the Roswell crash or allegedly allegedly yes huh. um so that could be a correlation there um the white man air force base also had minutemen missiles uh in the 60s and 70s before they were decommissioned you know if and there's developed. any connection with uh, the the aircraft that bombed hiroshima and uh, nagasaki um whether or not they were deployed from there or not or were they deployed from europe I think they were deployed from Europe. However, I don't. I don't know for certain. That's why I have, I'm asking you, an air, the, a Air Force guy. I mean, an Air Force guy would know better than me. Uh, the I'm not sure. I think the Enola Gay is currently at the Smithsonian, but the base itself has the second plane, uh, the Artiste. Hmm. There so, could be uh, there could be some attachment to that. I mean, mm -hmm. it did kill millions of people mm -hmm. in one shot. So that's a lot of a lot a lot of a lot of, a lot of energy released at one time. And I'm not talking about the blast. So mm -hmm. um, there was a question for you. Um, how did you you know what made you come to the decision to start to share your your 
paranormal experience. Uh, Dorothy Hop, uh, Hop, uh, Dorothy Hopkins has asked that. Oh, I um, missed that one. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, um, you know, 2017 came around. The UAP or the the Tic Tac UFOs leaked, and David Fravor started talking about them, and then Lou Elizondo came out and he started talking about things and Chris Mellon started talking about things. And it was really only after John Ramirez, who was fairly high up in the CIA, you know, started talking about things. And he had that, that PowerPoint presentation. I was like, well, if all these higher up people than me are talking about UFOs and aliens and all kinds of other things that they're seeing and experiencing, you know, maybe, Maybe I can talk about this, you know, and I'm not, I wasn't very high up, you know, I was just E E3 at the time, you know, I'm not a general or an officer or anything. So I often feel like the, the little guys kind of get looked over, you know, like the, the, mm. the, the lower enlisted kind of get shooed off. Oh, well, you're, you were just a private or you're just a private first class or whatever. Right. But uh, it was, it's really because of John Ramirez and Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon. And it was kind of just that snowball effect that I felt like I, I could actually say something without getting steamrolled completely by our government, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they'll still steamroll you. They just, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but only, uh, but not, but as long as you're not uh, messing up their narrative, you're good. I love that presentation he put together, the one that you were talking, the John Ramirez presentation. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, there's so much I didn't know about how everything was laid out. It was it was great. It was very long, but it was awesome. Like mm -hmm. learned so much from it. Um, yeah, that was an amazing UCR episode that that they had um, mm -hmm. when John broke all of that down i was just like ah, bah, da, bah, da. he's like yeah the government created google and then sold it to google and then they're like wait yes. you mean google wasn't made by the people <laughs> i mean it was beautiful and then the hybrid stuff and i was like yes yes it's the best now you always have to add allegedly to a lot of that Right. So, I know, allegedly. I know. Allegedly. Allegedly. You gotta, get, you gotta allegedly. get used to that. Allegedly. I'll start saying it more. I should allegedly. probably say it every 10 minutes on, on this show. Allegedly. All right. The French is killing me in here. <laughs> the French? Yeah, people are asking questions in French. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to ask you. I don't want to ask you. But no Francais here. Now I'm in Avion. I can try to figure out Portuguese, oui, oui. but then oui, oui. we can get DJ to help with I'm that. not going to try. My head will hurt. Wee wee. Wee wee. Wee wee. Stream yard. Are people asking about the stream yard. There's Sorry. people wanting to jump on. What's going? What are we going to do? Yeah. I mean, uh, well, you know, uh, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to send a message to Gary and to Adrian in the private chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's private. <laughs> Um, but you know, and it's also this just Adrian's kind of deal. I don't, I don't care what you do, it's your show, and his, he's your yeah, guest. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Open all right, I put it in there, but you know, we just got a lot of people here, man, and they're all so excited to see you. What do we got? Everybody's happy to hear with this. Um, and so, you guys, you better be excited. I would get really excited right now. I think Gary's cool with it. <laughs> Gary's cool with hey, anything on this cool. show. Did I just ask if Gary was cool? I'm like, Gary's cool. Though. I'm not even going to ask Gary. <laughs> what yeah, do so you this think? Is, this is going to be uh, Gary, uh, Gary Alien Girl 111 coming to you live. <laughs> Again. You did so good. Yeah, it's so good. Let's finish yeah, up. You did such a good Got to represent my voice, too. Oh, I think when you got the t shirt ready, Dr. Yeah. Scientist. Yeah, that's uh, that's my boys over there at uh, UFO Garage. Oh gotta give, yeah, gotta give, them, gotta give them some love. <laughs> I love them. They're so cool. They're so awesome. Well, you guys, you asked for it. I put the Streamyard link in. Jump on in. It's over, man. You know, we only it's have over. we only have Adrian for about ten minutes. So if you want to be, just, right, right, yeah. jump on now. Jump on now. 
Okay. This is where it gets um, crazy, Adrian. This this is when yes. people start talking over yes. each other and everybody goes nuts and yeah, it's always fun. It's gonna get a little I don't have my big, I don't have my big boom mic to go over the top of everybody anymore. So it's, it's, you're lucky tonight. <laughs> well, well, while we're waiting, um, because you know this is kind of like Adrian's got a little bit of time left, so I I just kind of want to like play some music and just talk about how great adrian is just just for a little bit because adrian's the guest you know um and i like thank you so much for being willing to come on the show for the for, for one like you were so cool about it um and like man i i just because i was talking to someone like how did that happen and i was like i don't know i just I messaged you and he was cool and he said yeah i'll show up on sunday and they're like what all right. Speaking of being popular, Adrian, <laughs> the, the the people have questions. So here we go. We're bringing have in. You, have you ever heard about the giants in if in Afghanistan? Other than back in uh, pre uh, pre in biblical days? No, not really. I mean, I've seen like the YouTube videos of giants found. Blah 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 blah. Scientists yeah, yeah. cover bones, but. <laughs> You know, it, you can't really. Supposedly, they found some bones on uh, Catalina Island of giants, but I, but there's uh, half the people say that it, it did happen. The other half of the people say he did it just to make money. <laughs> huh. Huh. So we yeah. got Deb here yeah. from the study of UAPs. Really, so what's okay. up, Deb? How are you going? Yeah. I'm just so happy to come in and say hello. First How's of all, going? I know everyone truly appreciate having another person come forward for sure. Um, I definitely appreciate your bravery and I wanted to come in and make sure you heard that from someone else. And also, of course, we're happy that you're here to talk to other people who have experiences. I feel like more people should be able to come forward because of your example. So thank you. Not a problem. My pleasure. <laughs> Next we've got Enzo. Enzo, what is up? What is up? How are you doing? Enzo. Everything is One going of the many great. Enzos. Many Enzos. Many Enzos. Uh, I, I do have a quick question for Adrian. First, I'd like to mirror what Gary said earlier. You're not alone in this. I was in the Air Force for 24 years myself. I was a KC-135 crew chief, aircraft maintenance. And uh, if there's time, maybe later, even the after show, I can share a story about our haunted airplane. <laughs> but uh, you, you definitely don't corner the market on strange things seen out there. So don't feel alone there at all. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I would specifically like to ask you, though, for when you, you saw the shadow person, you've done your own research now, what's your gut feeling? What is it to you? You know, and I really only want people to take this as my personal opinion. This is not truth. This is not fact. I I don't know for certain. Um, again, this is a very high, highly speculative thing, you know. Um, personally, I feel like this thing was either uh, extra dimensional or either extra universal, you know. In, now, in, define extra universal extra universal as in being like something from a parallel universe okay so like sliders like sliders mm -hmm. and because that's that's kind of a, a rather big theory out there is the multiverse right essentially is well i think there's an infinite amount of alternate universes like for every literal decision every move every movement every spin of a neutron there's a there's a new new universe created so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now imagine how many how many universes were created just from you being in existence exactly and I so thought, i thought sliders were those things from chilies where you get like six of them <laughs> and they like slather them in barbecue sauce it was also a There's really cool sci-fi show so this is dj the universes <laughs> DJ's uh, he runs the podcast uh, calling all beings, and uh, we also have John Music here. Always has so much information to give us. And S four, thank you guys so What's much John? for joining. Hey, uh, how are you doing, Gary? Good, you. 
It's good to see you. Awesome, man. Anybody got Adrian, questions nice to meet for you. Adrian? Nice we need you. to make sure we get any questions for Adrian before he needs to drop yeah. off. If yeah. we have anybody, we're gonna have. we're gonna techno. We're gonna give him the yeah. techno goodbye of all the love that we could ever give with all this love around. We're just gonna play some techno. So ask your questions if we've got it, because now's the time. Um, yeah, so if I can uh, yeah. jump in for a second. Uh, Adrian, how are you? Anthony from Unidentified S4. Um, I just wanted to jump in and ask, you know, I've been seeing shadow people on a consistent basis and I'm currently working on a theory that uh, it's possible that these shadow people are extraterrestrials from another dimension checking out the human race. You know, a lot of us uh, in the ufology field are out there filming this and trying to make contact with CE5 and other various ways to make contact with extraterrestrials. I'm wondering if it's possible that these shadow people are the extraterrestrials checking us out in a way where we can't see them, but we spot them through the corner of our eye. And then, you know, maybe they abduct us after they get enough, you know, knowledge on us and stuff of that nature. What do you think about that? I mean, it, it wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility. Um, again, up until we get the truth, pretty much everything is on the plate, right? Uh, short of the really fantastical stuff, like, I don't know, Personally, I would say demons I would kind of throw out, you know, a angels. Although, depending on what people's interpretations of them are, you know, it just depends, you know. Well, one person's angel is another person's demon is another person's alien. So, very exactly. True. So very exactly. True. exactly. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question for Adrian. Thank you, John. Thank you, John Music, for the $10 super chat. Appreciate it, Fred. Thank you, John. No problem. No problem at all. Wish I could give a hell of a lot more. You deserve it. Um, oh, you're too sweet. For, Thank you, John. I appreciate it, John. Yeah. Adrian, I, I just have a, a, a quick question because I know you got to go. So I just wanted to say, what was your reaction when you read about how some government uh, operatives working with the Bigelow guys saw shadow creatures on the Uintah Basin in addition to the millions of people apparently that are seeing them every year? What was your reaction to that? You know, I... Again, like shadow people to me is my my nomenclature or the lingo that I got it from was essentially like ghost hunters and that kind of expertise area. Um, so when I had read Skinwalkers or started researching Skinwalkers and listening to pod various podcasts about Skinwalker Ranch and they started talking about the shadow people there, I was kind of, as I was going through it, I was like, this sounds familiar, you know, this is kind of... There's a something in the back of my head here that feels like it's the same thing, kind of similar experience, you know, with the same way that they experience these shadow people out there. And that's really where I started kind of connecting the dots, you know. Right. Essentially, is, is that's where I connected the dots is through Shadow or uh, uh, Skinwalker Ranch and uh, different things from listening to. Bigelow talk about that specific place. Uh, I think I had read or listened to his interview on the Joe Rogan podcast is where I had actually listened to when he was talking about the shadow people. Yeah, the, those Joe Rogan podcasts were were very good. I hope that Joe Rogan is going to go back to covering the non-human reality again because he seems to have completely pulled away from it this past year, but he used to do a lot of good stuff. I don't know what happened. I know he's super into UFOs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wish you would do more, more podcasts about it. That's all. Definitely. Well, you can only be because he's not a you know he's not a podcast like you know Amy does or anything like that. So it's it's in order to stay credible, you can only throw a sprinkle of that stuff in. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've I've sent him I've sent him a bunch of messages <laughs> trying to keep him up to date on all the newest leaks and admissions and statements that are even more shocking, but. Him and his people never respond to anything, not ever. Hmm. Hmm. No, it's all cherry picking, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you guys, do you yeah. have any more last questions? Did, did everybody, DJ. DJ, DJ, put your question in. That's the last question, and then, then we're dancing him out of here. Adrian, my Air Force life. brother from another. <laughs> um, is there Was there any reporting procedure? I shouldn't say procedure. Were you able to report it? And if not, did you share it with a peer to see what the reaction might be? Right. And I actually do go a little bit into this is that there wasn't really 
an environment of reporting this kind of thing because you didn't have anything to report. You didn't have anything in your hands to say, hey, this is what I found, you know? And uh, in, or in, in other the, words, no chance in hell that this is going on a written report. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I um, love Gary's then content. You, then you have it's to explain great, it. Man. Right, you have yep. to explain it. And then on top of that, you have to have some kind of proof or some kind of evidence. And if there's not any sensors being tripped, there's no doors being opened, there's no seals being tampered with. And on top of that, we didn't have any security cameras inside the building because it's the top secret facility. You're not allowed to have cameras inside of it. <laughs> and uh, so I, you come up empty handed. And if unless there's somebody standing right next to me saying, hey, I also saw this with this guy, there's you get labeled a crazy person and kind of left out the room you know my, my follow-up to that would be did that environment lead to you getting out or was that had nothing to do at all with why you decided not to continue service that had nothing to do why i uh did not continue thank you very much i appreciate it and i think uh no study at U of uaps had one yeah more she's got one you. more question can, can you take okay. one more adrian sure thank you yeah. Of yeah, course. I just wanted to ask you, of course, reading the book, you knew about the hitchhiker effect. And I was just going to ask if you've been dealing with anything since these experiences. What's that? I'm sorry. The hitchhiker, the hitchhiker effect. effect? Um, you know, to my best ability, I cannot describe that I had any hitchhiker effect phenomenon happen with me. Um, you know... I would associate most of that probably with like ghost phenomena. Um, but even then I didn't really have anything attach itself to me or felt like I had anything attach itself to me. Um, I didn't have any lights turn on or off or TVs flicker on and off. Um, I didn't have any um, sleep paralysis issues afterwards. I know people have asked me that as well. Who sleeps? <laughs> right it's, some nights occasionally <laughs> it's funny they were uh in this program that i'm in now they got this like you know 13 page survey about you know how much do you drink how much do you sleep and i'm like oh shit um mm -hmm. hours, <laughs> <a night>. <laughs> <laughs> gary, maybe <laughs> gary is podcast treasure man he's got a he is, he is. I, he really I, was, is. Hey, I want to say thank you i, I just wanted to interact with adrian Enzo, shout out to you. Uh, John Music, obviously Debs, unidentified uh, S4 with an amazing New York accent. Akashi Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Our associate producer, and of course, the lovely and talented alien girl. She needs no introduction. Uh, Nowhere. I love you, DJ. DJ, I'm going to put you in the gray room. I'm going to put right. everybody in the gray room just for a bye little guys. bit you, while man. we say bye to Adrian. Um, but I'm going to be hanging out still but you know i'm just gonna we're gonna skip we're just gonna send him off right you know because we love him and he's doing such amazing stuff you know for the community and so we got to do this right chris right adrian um, right yeah <laughs> yeah right You're like what else is there to say to this crazy lady um so Chris, thank you for helping me co-host, girl. I needed you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and now it's just you and me. So, <laughs> Adrian, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Sometimes my show can be a little bit of a wild ride. Everybody is super happy that you're here. Um, and I try to give all my guests a mug who come on my channel. So if you're interested, just DM me, you know, your address later. If not, no big deal. I totally get it. But thanks again. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. We love you. <laughs> Bye. You. It's been my pleasure. Awesome, you guys. That was so cool. We're still having a stream yard party, you know? We're still having a stream yard party. The party's not over. We were just saying bye to the guest of honor who we love and we care about. And now we're gonna be throwing that stream yard link left and right. I'm gonna be tweeting it. Who knows what could happen deep in this dark night? We don't know what could happen. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. We had somebody, we had somebody with, I think we got everybody. There's somebody okay. else. What's up? What is up? I think we got everybody. I think we got everybody on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. Well. I'm getting rid of the chat now. I'm just gonna look at you guys. Gary, can I ask you a question? No. 
Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you were Wait. you were kind of hinting that you think this might be beyond UAPs and might be something else, uh, like a general phenomenon, so to speak. Uh, so does that mean that you have some more um, interest in other paranormal areas? Um, well, our work primarily is nuts and bolts, but personally, I have interest in a lot of different things. Uh, you know, I, I see, you know, nothing's, nothing's credible until it can be proven, repeated, and showed me that they have results. But because of some experiences in my past, I know that there is things that we can't explain, and those things fascinate me. Right, because I definitely got that hint from what you were saying that there might be something broader going on. Yeah, I've got a, I've got my fingers in uh, studying consciousness also, and and uh, you know other things. You know, so it's it's. Uh, I think it has a lot to do. Uh, uh, well, uh, a thesis I'm working on is you know about the uh, about uh, consciousness and the creation of the universe. So it's it's it. Gets a little, <laughs> gets a little hairy and complicated, but in a, in a, in a nutshell, it just basically says that the, the spark that created the universe was actually consciousness. Consciousness is what enabled reality to coalesce into what we all live in right now. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, I think everything's more connected than people realize. The further down, well, the at rabbit point, hole. Well, you got to think about this. At one point. Every single thing that you're made of right now and everything in our known universe that's physical that we know as a as reality all existed not as individual cells or, or subatomic particles, just as one primordial thing that we have no word for. And then, boom, great expansion and then matter and reality coalesced you know so that's that's where all reality starts to break down so that's that's where i start getting into some crazy crazy things so it may only make sense that everything's connected because yeah it was, at a it was at the beginning <laughs> yeah i'm at a place where i'm looking at consciousness in a nuts and bolts way and trying to look at it in terms of energy which is required for all atoms to connect and well everything all... is energy you're you're right. just a, you're, you're literally just a waveform if you if you if you have uh you know if you're you're 99.9999 repeating forever percent nothing even right. even solid matter is, is mostly nothing you're you're one half wavelength theory uh halfway one half wavelength of failure away from not existing so <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Hey, so we got a great question hey, from the chat. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so the great question from the chat. Most people in this community are full of shit has a question. <laughs> well, that's their name. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, their name uh, is most people in this community are full of shit. Is the name I love their the name. name. Uh, UAP the name, X. They're not wrong. The, not wrong. <laughs> so Gary Voorhees Jr. Is the UAP X report still on track to be released in a few months? In a few months, we're still on track for being able to openly talk about what we have. The actual full release of everything is going to be determined upon our own scientific efforts of going through our data. You know, the faster we can go through our data, and believe me, we are daily working on you know, working on basically what's uh, what we're really really working on right now is a is algorithms to go through the data and and programs to go through this data to make it quicker so hopefully by the time it's done we should be able to take two months and go through everything we have Fascinating, but man. you still have to wait for scientists to write up their reports on this and white papers which is basically the scientists writing up reports on this so we'll basically probably release the release uh data as in data sets you know as we figure something out because you gotta remember a lot of the stuff we have maybe may or may not be benign you know so uh and we may or may not be able to talk about a lot of that stuff so and we may or may not have anything going on and we're not allowed to talk about anything until this may or may not thing comes out so but so that's why we all trust it <laughs> That was awesome. Hey Gary, I was there was a uh, there was an interview recently I was watching. I won't name her name because that that would be not that would be very rude. But it's a person who advises uh, the very rich tech companies in Silicon Valley about uh, consciousness and how to realize your full potential. And and some somehow they linked it to the UAP phenomenon. But 
I had sent that person a message uh, and I asked them, I said, you you're, have connections and friends with some of the wealthiest people on the planet. They could, with, with just a tiny fraction of 1% of their personal wealth, they could jump the, uh, the um, disclosure movement forward by many leaps and bounds. They have that kind of pull and they have that kind of power and influence over mainstream media. They could force the New York Times and the Washington Post to put it across the headlines that the majority of the past 80 years decided it is decidedly non-human for the most part. They could do shit like that. Anyway, I tried to ask her about, can she at least very politely ask her friends to help more? Why don't they? Why don't they help? And she completely deflected and dismissed the question and reverted back to all of us deep inside ourselves need to reach inside and realize our own potential and we need to just help ourselves. And she completely just... Well, she wouldn't right continue away. to make the money that she does if she did that. You know, when it comes down to it, people like that do not directly affect things. They indirectly affect things. They buy a building to influence what's going on inside of it. They buy the stock of a company to influence the direction of that company. They don't walk into the room and say, here's $100 million. Let's go figure this out. You know that's that's an Elon Musk move, but he's yeah. He's didn't the, didn't uh, Jeff Bezos just give a hundred million to uh, that guy that worked with CNN? I, I no, believe no, he gave so he gave a hundred million to one guy to use as he sees fit. And I remember your recent podcast with I guess it was Vinny, mm -hmm. and uh, you were talking about how you know you need uh, donations on your website, and somebody from Silicon Valley could cash you guys out for the next fifty years, and <laughs> as it long as they're willing be, to donate, and, and to them, yeah, and to them. <laughs> To them, it would be like barely a fraction of one percent of their wealth. Well, I think I think once once all of our five hundred one c three stuff's done, and we can like write them a receipt saying, "Here you go, here's your tax deduction." I think a lot of those big, those bigger donations will come in, and I don't. We can't give anybody that 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 receipt right now, other than you know, thank you for your money. It'll be well spent. <laughs> you right. know. So, you know, now, you know, people that support us now, you know, you're, you're supporting our everyday thing, you know, because like our overhead right now is pretty low because we have a small team. You know, most of our work right now is crunching data, um, doing analysis, things like this stuff that we're, we're literally, you know, already have a lot of the resources. But it's, it's the things that we, you know, like equipment replacements and upgrades and things like that, that we right. can't do without bigger donations. Yeah, that yeah, stuff so, is very expensive. I mean, those somebody like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos could make sure you guys have all the latest and cutting edge equipment, and uh, they could, they, we, you guys could, you know, boost their egos by reminding them they'll make a statue of them, and you know, forever if they're the first one to disclose openly yeah. and uh, be the ones who take credit for it. That could really stroke their egos and make them go over the edge. But Sean. Well, if they're listening or if they ever hear this, you know, a million dollars would go a long way for our, for our company. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but think they need about to give you a hell of a lot more than that, though. But yeah. You know, to be honest with you, I wouldn't want more than that because I don't know if I could handle more than that because I think that would keep us pretty flush for quite a while. That would that would outfit us with basically the latest of everything we could possibly want. And because we kind of already specialized and we already kind of know exactly what we want to use, you know, 400,000 of that we could, we could buy equipment with. And then the rest of it we can use for R and D for new equipment, you know, because there's, if I, there's if I, if, I mean, honestly, yeah, you're right. But I know, I know there's a lot of people out there like me that if we were as wealthy as Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, we would start a new science center university, the center dedication for non-human studies. And it would be the most largest and well-funded center of science and university in the world. We would do that with our own money, but they well, there's think people, there's way. people doing it, just not gas. in this field. You know, there's, yeah. there's people, I mean, Elon, I mean, he's done, he's done amazing things for industry. You know, he's done, he's pushed the boundaries in everything that he does. You know, he, he treats his, you know, he's very, very, from right here, this allegedly, he's very, very hard on his expectations for people that work for him, but he also makes sure they're well compensated, that they're, they're taken care of, and that, you know, they're appreciated for the work that they do. Now, granted, he may want you to come in on Thanksgiving, though, so <laughs> it's, a tra it's a trade off to work for somebody like him. I'm wondering but, if he's a true believer or not. He's made a couple statements here I and there. I think he just doesn't care one way or another, and he's just yeah. worried about getting off this planet. 
you know, and I, and I, and honestly, I, I was reading an old journal entry, like from when I was way younger. And it's like, I'm worried for the world. I don't know why they're wasting all this money on entertainment technology when we need to get the hell off this rock. You know? <laughs> so, you I know, he, you know, he's got the money to create a zero point energy. machine. If anybody could do it, it would be him. And he's still using rocket fuel. It's just so sad. Well, he's he's using the the skill sets that are available. I mean, basically, right. he's limited to what's available in the commercial market or what he can develop himself. So, that being said, it just shows you the point that he's not well written in if there is technology like that. And if there is, Plus, technology, if he did create a zero point energy drive, they would never allow that out into the public. Anymore. If he did, I I don't know if he'd share it. I think he might exactly. use it. I think he might use it in his spacecraft, and then you know, just when he gets to Mars. By the way, I have zero foot energy, and I'm now the king of Mars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Great. Exactly. That'd be great news for everyone. I have. I there's a really. F I didn't mean to chuckle at one point, but I peeked over to the chat, and I saw a really funny question for Enzo. Does Enzo might does Enzo's mic get redder every stream, or have I been probed? That was by Captain Splash. <laughs> I've actually the got room? the, the power your of Gary's here. Look very it does mic appear, appear to be getting red? more red. Wow. Is your mic it does appear to be getting red, more red? Enzo. Usually, I feel yes. like it's no. Yes, it's, it's backlighting right now. Yeah, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's just it's, RBG backlighting. It's, yeah, that, yeah. When, the, when the lights cycle through, uh, I'm actually using Gary's power since he doesn't have his with him, so yeah. he has the same microphone oh. as I do. But I still have this voice. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Nine, six, five, oh, oh, I've got to say, Gary, really Gary, do you have, uh, and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, it's just some. you may have even answered it before, but. Uh, when you guys are doing your thing, your investigations, you get a picture of what is clearly some type of craft. Let's just, as an example, is there anybody you need to check with? You need to like call up Skunk Works. It's like, hey, is this you or anything like that? <laughs> I wish I wish there was an easy thing like that. Um, yeah, you know, we 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 do try to cross reference any, any anything that we see with known projects. Um, if it's an unknown black project, they, you know, none of us, you know, some of us still hold clearances, but none of us are active. So it, it, and even if we're active, all that stuff's need to know. So unless we happen to actually get a picture of one of them, like, you know, say, like, say you got a picture of the blackbird back in the day, they would come and tell you, Hey, no, 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 no. that's, that's sh so, good for so you. you somebody has it. access to your materials to where they could come in and like, eh, eh no. I don't know. Uh, we didn't give access to anybody, so if they did, it's illegally. But I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past them. Um, right. But we don't really, you know. I mean, there's not really much for them to get a hold of because it's all on physical drives. So I mean, we don't. Yeah, you know, we we haven't really mailed. Well, we mailed a couple of things, but they went on. They got there on time. <laughs> so, <laughs> no inter no no middle stops. Nothing. That we, we don't have any interference that we know of. But we've had some some pretty late mail coming from one of our scientists. So maybe uh, that's I, just dirty. Can I, just, uh, Oops. can I chime in on what was said earlier about money solving this problem? <laughs> because because uh, I did some research on Bigelow who has obviously a lot of money and uh, obviously yeah. he didn't get as far as we would have liked. I do think a lot of the leaks that we have kind of come from his direction. Um, I think that I need to win one of his essays. <laughs> right. Well, yes, but look at what he did. Like he did the, um, the poll that went out on experiencers. Then he delivered that to the APA the American Psychiatric Association. Uh, he started a company, NIDS, to study the UAP phenomenon, and then he got the offset. I know he's he's definitely a believer, um, right. but you know he's you know it's like I'm sure he would yeah he he would probably hire us to come in and work for him under his NDAs, but you know he's not going to work like we work. You know, <laughs> a lot of the Sorry. reason what takes so long with our work is that none of us have a paycheck. None of us have, you know, we're all volunteer and we're donation only. So, you know, it, it uh, I don't, I guess I, I would say it's in, it's in bad taste to go to somebody with money and say, just because you have money, you should give it to me. You know, should, should one of these gentlemen decide that, you know, 
you know, hey, I really like what this guy has to say. I really like what their company's doing. I'd really like to help them out. Yeah, you know, that's that's a whole different story. But to just go to them and say, you know, just because you're successful, give me your money, you know, that's, to me, it's in bad taste. I think, so, I think it was more to my point was that he has already tried and he is slowly trying to get things leaked out because they're all... all the, all the people who are leaking things are from that direction, but I think, I think that they have stumbled upon some pretty crazy stuff, especially since I know for a fact that, you know, the stuff at Skinwalker is, is, is you know, they say that, you know, it, it, it's real, you know, there's some re- seriously weird shit that happens there. So, and they were there for quite a long time. So I know for a fact, this guy's got, some, got some stuff, you know, so what about Brandon Fugel? You think he could donate to you? He's a very wealthy guy. Um, like I said, I think it's the same boat with it, like Elon and, and you know any of these other guys with money. Um, Brandon, he's you know he's he's spending a small fortune doing his research on uh, you know Skinwalker. Um, I really respect everything that he's doing, and uh, you yeah, know he he really cares about his guys, and you know his team that he has on the ranch. You know I can't say nothing but good things about them, and uh, you know right. Yeah, after you know, after, after things air, you know, I'll be able to talk more candidly about that. But it's it, it's definitely a good situation on that ranch. I can't speak the same for any of the other shows that might be in that area, but um, I can say for certain that those guys at that ranch are, are legitimate. I I wanted to share my full background, Gary, so you can see my picture of Dr. Travis awesome. Taylor. Yeah. I, I, because I'm such a fangirl of in Walker Ranch. <laughs> well, a lot of people love that 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 really pretty country boy with his accent and his big brain. No, I'm a, I'm a fangirl of the ranch. Don't <laughs> give me a trouble, Gary Voorhees. Uh, <laughs> Stop <laughs> lying. You got you got a man crush no, on him. Yeah, you got a crush on him. <laughs> no, I thought it would be funny for T.J. Allard. Hold on, where's my phone? Allard let me, let me on, tell him, hey. Picture. Let me send them a text. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had that on to um, give him, give him that timestamp for when that was. DJ yeah. Allard, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I had like a little mm. poster, like a Teen B poster of one of the guys from Skin? <laughs> Can't wait till I can show my pictures. Ufo, Ufo, Ufo. I mean, you heard? He just no, Travis, like, man, that guy, that guy's wild. Uh, I tell you what, he, uh, you know, he kind of. You know, watching the first season when he first came on the show, you know, he's very, you know, like, you know, like I was when I first got into this field, you know, hey, you know, we saw something, we know that it's something, not just a manifestation in my own head, you know, and uh, we need to find out what it is. So isn't, yeah. isn't he a part of some big new documentary coming out? So he's going to be in it and a lot of other people. Not sure. Um, There's some big new I UFO documentary coming out. Of- for as much as I know, my head's in the sand for most current things. <laughs> I think Dr. Travis is in a lot of different things, but I mean, we have season three is coming up, so I'm excited. Me too. I can't wait to see it. Aren't you in it? Aren't you in that yeah. Travis? It's like, it's in the Maybe. Best. I don't episode know. Episode one. Like say it, season you, one. Episode one. Like, eyewitness testimony one. He's like the first person they interviewed. Scary. Well, that, no, that was unidentified. You're talking about Alien. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She's, talking, she's talking about Skinwalker Ranch. No, I, I, uh, okay. I can't really talk about it. I'm going to have to get a wanna... Tiger Beat poster of Gary. <laughs> at Skin- man, Fugel has <laughs> some cool cars. That guy has cars, man. So oh, your your name, man. Akasha oh, Chris, no. is that, is that for? Mm-hmm. So Chris, is that is that from uh, a uh, a a play on the Akashic record? Which uh, my your, Akashic your, your, Chris? Your, yeah, your name? of course. Yes, okay. <laughs> I love. Yeah, I'm obsessed. I'm like um, the whole thought experiments, and you know, it just kind of took me down the consciousness route, and then I started reading, um, which I have not gotten that far, but I'm gonna get through it. Is um, Science in the Akashic Field. So that's where I kind of put it, started thinking Akashic Records, Akashic Field, quantum physics, super string. So kind of tying it all together that way. But that's so where I'm Akashic Records is it already written in your DNA? Huh? I'm sorry. 
<laughs> is it an Akashic record that's a, you know, a subspace field that you get information from, or is it just something that's literally written into your DNA that we are just rediscovering? I think we are, I think it's written into our DNA. I mean, I, I think that it's down to our DNA and it's all part I'm a big of this fan big of the, network. Uh, I, I just think it's a network. I just think, I'm a think it's like we're all a big tied. fan of the genetic memory. Oh, are you? Yeah, yeah. I haven't looked at okay. I'm now you're taking taking yeah, me down was, you know, another Gary, rabbit I'm, hole, Gary Voorhees. I'm glad you brought that up, Gary, because there's been so much talk by a variety of people across the spectrum about the DNA manipulation. And I was wondering if you think a part of it, in addition to them just coming in and manually over time, you know, little by little changing our DNA, do you think some of it might be reactivation after a long period of time that's now starting to get activated, some kind of parts of our DNA code that at certain points in time, it, it just all of a sudden comes to life and reactivates and, and shows itself more. What do you think about that part of it? Well, it's actually something I've thought about quite a bit. Um, Me too. And, you know, it's like when I was looking at uh, some aspects of that and because I was looking into uh, people that use through, through meditation are able to activate genes and through, through, uh, you know, they, they call it uh, gene therapy now is the scientific term for it. They use genes to uh, turn on and off certain genes to give you lo lesser chances of cancer or to give you a better chance of surviving cancer. And these gene therapies are working pretty well. I actually have a, a very good friend of mine that's using gene therapy along with, uh, you know, traditional means to help stave off his cancer um so i think that there's definitely something to it and uh yeah. there's no hitch i have not uh had any hitchhiker effect uh i've heard of it and i i me or nor my team have had any of it um and there was another question that i was trying to answer thank you rex for that. the five dollar super chat too thank you and what was the other question you were looking at <clears throat> Uh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying real quick. The reason I brought it up is because uh, the other day I was having a chat with a random stranger about all this, and she happened to be, you know, somebody that's really into this. I don't know if she was either a psychologist or did she say a geneticist? I forgot because I was busy trying to run around and, and grab my, my my toddler who was trying to run out the door of this place. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I know I know what that's like. <laughs> yeah, like I just I, every time I say hi to somebody, she just takes off running. I have to go run and drop everything and go grab her. But um, the the lady was talking to me, and uh, I was talking about the DNA manipulation and how it seems like a lot more hybrid young females are showing up. Like I told you, Richard Dolan is really into this now. And uh, Elizondo's made comments about it. And she, she mentioned, she's like, you do know that uh, in addition to that, a lot, of our, a lot of things inside our DNA coding that could have been put a long time ago are now at certain points when there's like, it gets triggered to activate, might be getting triggered now to show itself more. Uh, well, I mean, that's true. I mean, it, that, but well, you, yeah, she, she brought I mean, up some great points. I don't remember her exact words, but she's like, right now, recently, in the past five, 10 years, she's noticed also, the children are very different than they were 20 or 30 years ago. They're so much smarter. They even look different. And she's like, they might be getting reactivated from what was put there 50 or 100 years ago or maybe 13,000 years ago before the cataclysm happened. And a little bit is getting reactivated from before the cataclysm, some kind of Atlantean DNA. But she's like, you need to take that into consideration. Well, I don't, I don't go, she brought that up. I don't go that heavy into it like that. But I do know that it was you know, definitely... Do. Yeah, I know. I know you do. Yeah, you know me, man. <laughs> uh, you definitely, you definitely stretch me to the edge of my uh, <laughs> my belief system. <laughs> good, good. Let's keep doing it. But uh, uh, I do know, you know, you do know that there's a, there's definitely solid examples of things like that happening. Look at uh, you know certain certain diseases that only manifest themselves based off of uh, you know stress patterns, and uh, you know they can actually genes can actually be activated later in life to give you you know, Alzheimer's or, or give right. you other, you know, they think, you know, things, you know, um, I'm trying to remember, uh, MS is one that's like that, you know, it, you could go your entire life perfectly normal, then literally within a year, not be able to walk because of it. 
and you know, and it's 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 because the gene activates, and so right environmental factors and other stuff could be activating this right now. A lot of reasons. Yeah. Or so everything you it. do, everything you put into your mouth, everything you think, everything you put into your body, everything around you affects how you turn on and off the genes um, in your body. So I mean, and that's that's starting to become uh, an actual study. Uh, they're actually studying uh, gene manipulation now. No, I'm not talking about like with CRISPR or anything like that. Um, I'm really trying to. I'm. I'm. My mind is burning. No, there's one. There's, there's one. Yeah, you're right. I need to. There, there's one there, better there, than CRISPR now. Better than CRISPR. Well, not better so much better than CRISPR, but there's actually a research uh, uh, type. A type of actual research. It's not. It's re, you know real science research that that's working on looking at how. All right. So for a long time, when they did the human human genome project and they they unraveled all of our DNA and they they looked at the entire thing and then, you know, and they thought all this other stuff that we weren't using, it's just garbage DNA. Well, now that they're now they're really figuring out there's no such thing as garbage DNA. Right. So and and um, there's a term for the study of of that technically garbage DNA and how to turn it on and off. And I'm, it's eluding me right now. Um, but uh, I got into it for a little while. And I've yeah, got even, some pediatrician, even some pediatricians I've talked to have noticed it this past five or 10 years, an explosion in the number of very young children who are abnormally intelligent and much bigger and taller and stronger and stronger immune system and everything else than, than they should be for their age. And they said 20, 30, 40 years ago, you'd see somebody that with that kind of, uh, I, I guess you call it almost superhuman levels of, of everything, maybe one out of a thousand, one out, one out of 10,000 kids. But now she yeah, we were, like we were pretty one rare back in the day. Like one out of 10. <laughs> it's like one out of 10, one out of five. She said it's an explosion and there's no scientific explanation for it because the food that kids eat now is much worse than it was 50 years ago. They're not exercising. Well, more. the food your kid eats is much worse. <laughs> Well, I, just, no, I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, my kid eats really good, but I mean, I'm saying like no, they kids eat too. a lot of junk food yeah. and they stay and play too many video games, but the pediatricians are noticing it too. That was my main point. On the negative side, though, we have a lot more obese children too, though, and that's due to the poor what nutrition. Obese. Uh, well, like, obese, oh, I thought you said yeah. beastly. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> and just in general, I mean, most of us, you know, I mean, anybody that's over 30 knows the struggle, you know what I mean? I, I got down to a nice trim, 200 pounds, and at 200 pounds, I'm I'm just about 13% body fat. And now, you know, since I transitioned to working, you know, a full time nine to five, and just going full time, you know, Mr. Mom, and uh, working for UAPX, I've gained like 30 pounds. I'm I mean, I'm, start, I'm yeah, starting to get. doesn't help. Yeah, so, being at home too much and watching too eating too much it makes mm-hmm. you. But other countries are not seeming to have nearly as bad of an obesity problem as here. Like, oh, yeah, but they all have to work friends. until they die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like <laughs> my, friend, my friends from um, from the Baltic countries or Mediterranean or Eastern Europe, they're much thinner uh, than, than than Americans. Now look um, look at the uh, daily activity of yeah. a typical person. I mean, we're talking like the grandparents will live with you because they take care of your children during the day. They cook most of the meals. They're tending a garden. They, you know, they're they're not sitting. In a chat room with Alien Girl, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're sleeping what? right they're now. Not? <laughs> yeah, they're not. They're getting up at the crack of dawn and working on they're working on you know the you know so and I mean of course that's not true with all of them but mm-hmm. you know there's more centurions in Italy than here, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know it's, it's the food they're eating too. They're eating actual yeah. stuff growing out of the ground versus whatever you Best get through advice. the drive through. Yeah, the best advice I ever people got. People used to live. Eating. People used to live very long in other parts of the world a long time ago before pollution and junk food got here. Um, I know on on my dad's side of the family, my grandmother's side, and all that they were all from the Caucasus Mountains and uh, living up there in the mountains with the fresh air and the organic food and everybody walked. You know, in the 1700s, 1800s, no cars, no pollution. I I heard a lot of family stories about how people a long time ago, and they said the farther in time you go back the bigger and the longer lived they get in the Caucasus Mountains. And the further, the more recently you come, the people, for some reason, they, I heard when I was a kid, they got a shorter lifespan and they got shorter in stature also. But it was un- very common even 150, 200 years ago for people to live way over 110 or even 130, they told me. And my great-great-grandfather died at 138. He got murdered. He was 
walking without a cane. Oh, damn. He, he didn't need glasses. <laughs> That's hardcore. He, he, listen, he could hear and see just fine. He didn't need glasses or a cane. He got murdered at 138. And uh, his neighbors murdered him. They wanted to take his land away from him. And uh, his one of his wives died at the age of 100 and I think 20 or something like that. So, But wow. that doesn't happen anymore. There's so much pollution over there now that you'd be lucky to make it to 80 or 85. Yeah, we, we definitely we definitely pollute. We, we've polluted our planet. I mean, yeah. radiation levels are the highest they've ever been due to our nuclear arsenals, our nuclear testing. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're destroying our planet with, with you know, uh, you know, just uh, just dumping you know, our waste products, you know, just mining lithium for our batteries is destroying half the planet. You know, I mean, there's well, so much stuff. energy could save us. It could. And, you know, that's that's what something that's one thing that's always eluded me. You know, it's why would you continue with a technology that's so destructive? You know, it's like right now we're so we're all hooked on it. You know, we can't live without it. But why didn't anybody think to at the beginning say, hey, no, we can't do that. That's 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 not sustainable. That's not going to work very well. We'll use it for now. And then let's let's go to better things, you know, and we had electric cars as early as the 1819. You know, I mean, as soon as electricity came out, somebody's like, hey, look, we can make this a motor. Boom. <laughs> you know, and they, they had an electric car, but they just like, ah, fuck you. It's, we're not making money with that. You know, <laughs> well, it's all about money and comfort, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the quickest they can get it out there, you know. Hey. It, well, Nikola Tesla tried to, tried to get some of this technology out in the late 1800s, early 1900s, but, you know, he got destroyed and, and humiliated unfairly and died a broken, depressed man. And, uh, yeah, he died, he died an asshole his, in a hotel. Yeah, yeah I mean, isn't that crazy? I heard that, I heard that all his best technology was taken out of that hotel room by the FBI. Yes. And, and uh, you know who? Stuff, yeah. Allegedly, yes. J. Edgar Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover. Guess who owned the hotel? Not, who? who owned the hotel? Uh, Donald Trump's grandfather. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, whatever was Donald not Trump. that top secret, whatever was not that top secret, was I guess taken back to Serbia. You know, and um, they, I think the majority of those cases yeah. are in his home country now, in the museum for Nikola Tesla. Well, if you um, ask, if you ask a lot of Serbian people, they say that he tried to tell people when he was young that he was being contacted by non-humans, but everybody thought he was out of his mind, and they humiliated him. Well, that and they would say he would often be in trances, uh, and that he, you know, like talking about the Akashic record, he, you know, right. they say that he he was one of those people that could tap into it. He yeah, that. they said Einstein. He, he came up with all kinds they of said tech. Tesla did, and and I've always Galile been Galileo like, was another one. Really? Yeah, they all tap into. They have the commonality is the ability to go and ask very particular questions or get this inspiration out of, out of these experiments. I mean, it's, it's been, the same thing that we're talking about. It's just different protocols, mm -hmm. but it's the same concept It's consciousness It's the power of consciousness. Right. And can you really, if all everything that ever has been is or will be is stored in a central location and you can tap into it you can do wonders or you could do nightmares because they could have now taken that goes the into, uh, approach to the free energy and they didn't you know they they the the whole said, he theory. said that he was being contacted by non-humans and they were giving him a lot of this technology already designed the blueprints were already there to make it and uh, when he tried to tell people that you know what now, happened now to, to be fair tried. those are those are very un, uncertain un, 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 uh, it, I can't, man. I'm, I'm fumbling my words. They were uh, verified. Claims or, they, or they verified, were, they, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why it's also, rough, also you know. But there was enough. Uh, there was enough break. weird shit that the guy said that, yeah. you know, his three six nine. You know, if you understood three six nine, you'd understand everything about the universe. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, that has literally bothered me ever since I heard it. You know, <laughs> because I don't understand it and I want to. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's because, you know, it's it's the it's the parallels that, you know, of uh, three, three is a special number. Three yeah. is a very yeah. special number in every culture. Dividing by three, the number three, you know, being a prime number like that, there is something special. You know, the Holy Trinity and every other culture has a three as a very special number.
three and seven. I don't know what it is, but three and seven, possibly twelve. Also, those are special numbers. I think. I think. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't assign too much meaning to just about anything at this point. I, I would. Uh, I would try to look for the commonalities amongst everything, and and I think really honestly that that's consciousness. I think everything yeah. can be. Yeah, speaking of mug, I'm not going to take a mug. I'm going to need a percentage since, you know. I'm no, 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 I'll send it. <laughs> I'm trying to get the right light. Yeah, babe, if you want a mug, just give me your address and I'll send you yeah. one. But I know everybody's weird about their dresses, but you guys can just DM it. Just DM me on me, Gary. Uh, my and wife I can would send kill you, you if you showed up, so I'm, not, I'm cool with giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she definitely oh, that's would. Funny. Oh, that's she is funny. very, very protective of her man. Does oh, she that's know good. That's, right how, it's that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. So cute. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All the guests. Matchy, matchy. Yeah, I get to see my wife. The hell's like, an well, alien girl? One, one, one. Why the hell do you have an there alien girl cup? I'm like, uh, it's this. Uh, this lady online that uh, has got a podcast. <laughs> that pop on her oh, you guys, the number one oh, UFO God. channel. Look, the number one They're UFO crazy. channel on YouTube is here. It's Brett and Blake Cousins. I love you guys so much. <laughs> That's cool. And Brett and Blake are chilling in the chat. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm a huge third phase fan. I've just been, I've loved their stuff forever. I think, um, you know, especially Gary, when we talk about, you know, citizen research and, and ways that people can kind of take in that information for the longest time, let's put them back up because... I just like to brag. For the longest time, I watched their phase of Moon because <laughs> John's <laughs> because I um I like how they had the daily UFOs that came out every day. There would be like five, six, you know, and you could go and you could look at them. Especially a lot of people I know they would like they who felt they had seen things. They would go and watch their phase uh, two, and and I actually found a clip on their show of something that I saw, and I think it was the only place I had found a clip of something that I had saw. But in a lot of ways, you know, Brent and Blake are always collecting stuff from the public in similar ways, you know, but it's just really great that we have so many people who are researching it. One of the interesting things that uh, Third Phase and a lot of us have seen is um, the flying humanoids, right? The flying humanoids. You guys oh, seen yeah. those UFO videos with, right? So they would put those out a lot. And now we got the jetpack people and it's like, okay. Yeah. So, you know, the stuff that you see kind of filters through as time goes on. I still looking for the guy on. in San Diego. There's, there's, <laughs> no, there's, there's a dude in San Diego that's got one of those jetpacks, and he keeps he keeps just fucking buzzing them, and they can't Flying get out by the and shitting everybody up. Yeah. Yeah, no. man. And I just, it's just crazy, all the stuff that's been going on, and I just feel like it's all going to freaking, like, come out every other day. I mean, uh, what yeah, what we, what we new piece of information is? Twenty twenty two. Yeah, Dendo, we need Dendo, some big stuff Dendo. in twenty twenty two. Big news drops, Gary. Um, I think the most I, important I thing is to stop worrying about it, and it'll happen. I, I, you know, it's kind of yeah. it's kind of like the whole philosophy of uh, how do you know when you're in love? You don't. It just happens. You know. Uh, you know how how do you find the right one? You 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 can't just go to the supermarket and find the right one, or go to a bar and find the right one. You know, it just has to naturally happen and that's you know we just all just need to keep working towards our goals you know and and not worry about whether it does or not you know because basically you know through our research through citizen science through you know you know it seems like the government's actually doing something but you know ask me if i care if congress is being briefed on ufos yes and no yes i care because at least you know it gives us credibility no, I don't care because I know they're not going to do anything with it. Right. <laughs> so you, when they do something with it, then I'll care. You know, it, and so it's, it doesn't affect my research one way or another. We just keep plugging. You know, if, if uh, you know, we get a jump in our research because they say they are real and here's the information, cool. Now that's stuff we don't have to research. Woo! -hoo! Now we jump ahead and we go to the next stage. You know, so no matter what. We just keep plugging there's, there's on. Been, there's been so much talk of these underwater USOs. I remember there was, somebody was just recently talking about somebody high up that there's 10,000 plus underwater uh, sensor hits just in the U.S. per day. And uh, God knows globally. And then there's been a lot of talk about how they go down from the uh, orbit. They go down right about Catalina Island. 
and then they skim across the ocean and then they dip below the ocean right around the Guadalupe Island and they go to an underwater base at the bottom of the ocean there. That's one base. Maybe it's a non-human way station. I don't know what it is, but there's been so much talk, not just that lady, Dr. Laura Gale or whatever, but like a lot of people have been talking. Ross Coulthard, he's been hearing stuff from the Australians more and more recently said the Australians are starting to wake up. Yeah, well, well, when it and comes down underwater to that. bases, they need to talk on the news that they have confirmation of UAP coming and going from an underwater base. We, If we had something big like that, that could help. Too many people yeah, are talking about it now. There's something bit. over there. There's something just, under the I'm water there. They admit they're real. I mean, that's that that yeah. was the that was the big hurdle. I mean, baby steps. You know, I think at this point. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can't expect that. You know, what we understand in this in our little niche of the world, and what we're we're experienced, and what we are ex- we are exposed to affects the way that we think. You know, the you know we you know when we hear these things in the in the news, and they're like, oh well, yeah, duh, yeah, but that's only because we're already deep in this shit <laughs> you know the average person that's going to work grinding out some hours so they can make sure they got food on the table that they can pay their mortgage they can do everything they don't give a fuck they just they just want to make right. sure they still got a job tomorrow and then they don't you know, think about this we no, think about why would this they? all the time and they don't think about it at all and if you ever bring it up they just cringe no, yeah, they'd be like, uh, you know, sort of. Yeah, the, All entire, right. the, yeah, the yeah. entire disclosure community is a fraction of one percent of the population. We got to yeah. get those percentages up. And even even of that, you have people that have experienced something weird, which gets them down these rabbit holes. Mm-hmm. You know, honestly, I would have been still an X fans file if the two thousand four event happened, but I wouldn't be the president of UAPX if it hadn't happened. You know, there was no way in hell I would have be doing that would be wouldn't be doing all this i'd still be in the chat and like oh the alien girl's on oh sweet you know <laughs> it, <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna no, right. it takes something odd happening to you at your house yeah. or in your life or a sighting for you sometimes for people to wake up and realize that we're not alone uh, there was an old lady just last year that told me that stuff got moved around her garage she lives alone she goes to get her coffee and comes back to her car in her garage her carport Everything in the garage, including in her car, had been moved around to the opposite side. She's like, that was like four to six hours of hard labor happened in 10 seconds yeah, without making a noise. I mean, she, she didn't have any earpiece on. She's like, Who, who's messing with me at my house, moving stuff around my house without me seeing it? What is going on? So that, that prompted her to go look up um, poltergeist phenomena. And then she got into UAP after that. She, she yep. went down that rabbit hole. And that's just how it happens. And then so... You know, and a lot of the reason why I'm really interested in hearing about people's stories, but I don't necessarily care about studying them, is because it's too it's too easy to lie. It's too easy to have mental illness. It's too easy, or it's not, and it's not easy to validate something unless it is like four or five people saw the same thing. You know, when when you have multiple witnesses, that's when it starts to get a little bit more credible. Um, and unless I personally can go in and, and go to these places, go look up archives, go you know cross-reference a billion different databases to try to verify these people's stories, you know, I have to keep it as cool story, bro. You know, and and just keep on moving because you know. But just know that I, I keep it in the back of my head because it may correlate with some data that I do find in the future. So I mean that's why I still listen to them. That's why I still read them. That's why I still listen, you know, hear hear about them. But we don't study them. I I just wanted to right. say that I think the the people interested in this go well beyond the numbers that you think. First of all, mm-hmm. there's the people who don't report, don't talk to people about it, who have some experience, um, but don't really you know get attached to the community. Then there is a greater number of people. Oh, you have no idea. I've got got people in my inbox that are, are, you know, they're you know, no way in hell they'd ever be seen on on any type of podcast like this. Nor they like if they like this is what would happen if uh, oh (laughs) if somebody happened to see them watching one. You know, the wife walks in. What are you doing? No, nothing. No, I'm just. <laughs> the I'm, watching, I'm watching porn. <laughs> That's it. That's the only thing. Porn is the better answer. It feels like. But it's, <laughs> when you look at some of the videos that are out there and you see five million people have watched them, you mm-hmm. know that's not just UFO Twitter. Yeah, I've been yeah. busy clicking that link. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amy, did you see the? Uh, um, are you still lagging? 
Damien. Am I still? Am I still what? Damien. Um, I can't Can pronounce. Okay. Damien. Deus. Sixty-nine. It was lagging, and he had a question. He it's went. Oh, finish. okay. He put it on the chat of how Gary defines the lowest form of consciousness. Um, well, I don't think there could be a lowest form. I think consciousness is just consciousness. And is uh, is your name uh, uh, across from Asmodeus the demon, or just a cool play on your own name? Both. Mm. <clears throat> it's a bit of both. Oh, there he is. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. God, you guys are all choppy for me. It's because uh, I'm on the other oh. side of the pond. Yeah, that cable's getting old. <laughs> so how do you pronounce it just to make sure I don't mess it up again? Demodius. Like yeah, Demodius. Demodius. Yeah. Love it. There's a there's a there's a demon called Asmodius. He's a he's a uh, lower echelon demon, but he he's wanna think of him as like a crossroad demon. Yeah, he's he's a lower form of demon, but he's still my favorite. No, he did fall in love with a with a woman, so yeah. There's a D and D version as well, but I won't go into that. Oh say, yeah, he's, he's my monster too. manual. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is uh, that's uh, uh there's uh, that's in Christian Christian lore. Is there's an as a demon that's Asmodeus, which is what the D and D version is based off of. Ah, interesting. Uh, theology and uh, theology, Christian history, um, history of religion itself has been a been something I've been interested in since I was a kid. Hmm. Plus, I may have played first edition through third edition. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. I could tell. Yeah. I could tell, Gary. You were hiding it. You were trying no, to hide it. I never it. hide it. I love it. Good. Good. Folklore as well, by any chance. Um, I think there's a, a lot of truth in folklore, and there's a, uh, a lot of uh, misrepresentation based off of uh, lack of understanding. Uh, at, you know, that basically creates folklore, you know, everything from the we people in Ireland to, uh, you know, the, the aboriginals the fact that they have no concept of time, you know, now they do because we've got them all drugged out and <laughs> messed up. But, you know, it's, uh, it's super interesting to read the histories. That's why I like my, my handle in most video games is Acadian. Well, see, now because I want to know what you think of Stranger Things, which touches on both D&D and this idea of another... I really like the first season, but that's all I've yeah. watched, so... It's got but a very got... Lovecraftian feel to it, hasn't yeah, it? When are they coming back with the third it's season? It's so scary. It's so scary. Sam, third I... season's out, I think. I think really? it's the Are all those one. kids like 23 by now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should be adults, I think. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think the Wheel of Time was pretty good, too. The Wheel of Time, not bad. Actually, I'm really enjoying that. I that's yeah. one of my absolutely that's in my top three favorite book series. So my my three favorite multiple book series is Isaac Asimov's The Foundation series, the Wheel of Time series, and the Sword right. of Truth series. Okay. Those right. are my well, favorite. I, I like how they I like how at the end of that first season they introduced the concept of a previous civilization before it got destroyed that had anti-gravity craft flying around that was really cool they're yeah. slowly slowly the uh entertainment industry is starting to introduce concepts that we've been talking about for years into tv shows and movies uh, well, they i've did, been seeing that a lot more recently Shinara like, chronicles did yeah i was about to say it's the Shinara chronicles that was awesome i don't know what happened to too it got axed they did it get axed yeah oh, so they had two it, seasons it's it was shame. really good it was really good well, yeah, they've been. I mean, you know, Marvel comic movies are talking about multiple universes and portals and aliens. Right. Then you had the recent Godzilla movie Turtles? introduced the concept of the breakaway civilization. They made a comment in that movie, the Godzilla movie. So they're starting to use our terminology in Hollywood movies, but obviously not in the way we wish. But they're still they're doing it anyway. Well, they introduced well, the concepts. You know, what I mean, actually. Yeah. So hey, there's some... Amy, I'm gonna have to. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm gonna have to sign off. You can't, you, can't oh, okay. you can't hang. You ain't got this. You can't hang. No, good night. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, here, let's let's put some music on so I can say bye to you.
I'm so I love sorry. You, I didn't mean to break up the party. Oh, you didn't break up the party, girl. You made the party. So I love fun. you so much, Akashi. Akashi, Chris, I love you, girl. Thank you so much for backing me on this show. I needed your help. I needed your love. We came out strong. We didn't know what was gonna happen, did we? No. no. We did. Oh my gosh, it was a wild ride, girl. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love, love you. you. I will see. I'll see I you soon. You. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Yeah, We're just saying bye to Chris. So Thank you guys so much. Bye, Chris. Awesome. She's so cool. She's so cool. Okay, sorry. I just have to play tech. <laughs> <laughs> so I, just, I like it. It's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. She did so. She did such a good job. She was so nice. And I'm so happy. I wanted to address oh. the theory that we're being influenced by entertainment, which a lot of people have confirmed in the intel groups. Um, they they literally are putting out content in entertainment to influence. So is it they're taking our terminology on, or is it? They're saying, you know, maybe we should introduce this and see how the public deals with it. No, I think we've been using it way before they did. Same. Well, the concepts have been around well before we used them. You yeah, know, I mean, you got, you got to look at people like, uh, you, know, you know, some some of the authors from the '60s and '70s. You know, they, you know, they had some of these concepts. Like, look, look at, look at, some, look at all, all of Philip K. Dick's work. You know, I mean, and ironically, he really wasn't a drug user. You know, they, uh, you know, he got the rap, the reputa reputation of being a drug user, but in reality, he didn't do them. He did, he did them at one point, and then, but it wasn't a constant thing. He wasn't just a whacked out, drugged out person writing all these crazy books. You know, and the one the one series from him that really stands out for me was the Vallis series, which was introduced to me uh, ironically through Twitter, because somebody's like, uh, you know, hey, check out the Vallis series, you probably like it. You know, and then uh, you know, as soon as I read that, you know, it immediately a connection with the Black Knight satellite and the and you know, uh, Black came, Knight. Oh, you know, the Black Knight satellite, man, dude, I can't believe you brought that up. We need to hear a lot more about that shit. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No. So well, anything that's orbiting the Earth that's been here since before we were putting satellites up, we need to know about. I definitely you know, don't yeah. think it's everything that we're putting out or every show we're seeing, but I think that we should pay attention to the fact that the Intel people are telling us some of the things that are being put out are being put out for a reason. I wouldn't doubt well, it just, at all. Well, look at the Stargate show. They, it, they so. made fun of themselves one time. Uh, they had a uh, a guy that was uh, basically, you know, dreaming or or dr remote viewing in his dreams all of oh, the Stargate true. missions, and then they paralleled it with this guy is putting out a TV show about the Stargate, and you know they're like wormhole extreme. Yeah, yeah. So it was. Uh, I thought that was kind of a funny uh, a twist to that show. That's and one of my favorite. Don't forget J.R.R. Tolkien's. Don't forget Tolkien's work of Lord of the Rings, talking about how in the, first, in the first age, long ago age, before global wars, there was a super intelligent, extremely tall, long Nordic-looking, long platinum blonde-haired race of elves that had access to, you know, they they were just far superior in their engineering and their artwork and music than anybody else after, and that age is long gone, and they helped to uh, they helped a species of extra tall man too that went under the ocean. I mean, I think. Tolkien might have read some stuff about ancient pre-cataclysm history and then might have influenced his work. So that that's a big well, one, there's, too. Well, there's plenty of it, especially if he uh, reads the Vedas and, you know, some of the Indian texts and things like he that. Was, yeah. I mean, yeah. Even if he hadn't written anything to do with Lord of the Rings, he would have still have been a world-class, renowned scholar. Like, he transcribed right. Beowulf. You know, he's one of the first people to transcribe that to, to the English language. Yeah, he's amazing. Absolutely amazing guy he was. Yeah. John, you, you constantly amaze me with like your, your range. <laughs> what do you what do you yeah. what do you do for a living if you don't mind me asking? Well, I don't want to talk about that on camera, but I, I'm just oh, trying right. to start yeah. a new I'm just trying to Only start fun. a new business right now. But uh, uh, the reason I know a, a, a wide range, uh, you know, not maybe as much as a lot of people on here in the chat, but I know a lot because I, I read a lot and I pay attention. That's all. Yeah. So I mean, I, I like to I like to talk about a broad range, not just nuts and bolts, as you can see. I like to go yeah. all the way into the yeah. ancient past. And, 
I'm just OCD and I literally just can't stop. I like it, it sounds funny, but in reality, I actually have a, a severe problem. Like I constantly, if I'm not doing something, learning something, reading something, you become stagnant. Uh, yeah, I, I, I literally will go insane, and it'll it just drives my everybody in my life nuts. So I this is weird, understand. John. John was talking about Marvel, right? So give my computer Marvel. a little bit of a second. Marvel, and he was talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah because Wait, because they keep talking about in, in the movies. I don't read. I never read comic books as a kid. I'm talking about movies recently. I'm talking about how they introduced the concept to the globe openly. People who don't even read the comic books about the multiverse, about portals, about beings coming and going, um, about much older civilizations that are long gone on other planets and other. Pl I mean, this is stuff. That we've been talking about, but they're introducing it in a way that can be digested by children and by people who don't know anything about the phenomenon. And that's not the only movies or TV shows that are doing it. A lot of TV shows are doing that. That's now. a TR3B, am I right? That's a freaking TR3B on the movie poster of the Marvel's Eternals movie. That's well, a have, you, have, you, have you seen the movie? No, I haven't seen the movie. It. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big it. black triangle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Of course it is. Yeah. Of course. Got, if you've yeah. got uh, if you got Disney Plus, it's yeah. on Disney Plus right now. I'll watch it. Tonight. I watched it yeah, last I watched week. It. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. That just trips me out, man. I don't know why. It's like, wow, that's that's crazy. You know, it's just and and if you look at the the new documentary that Secure Team came out with, um, called Rise of the TR Three B. They've got James Goodall in there and he breaks down, you know, the military history behind the TR-3B and, and the things that we know and kind of frameworks it so that if you follow the facts, you realize, yeah, it's easily legitimate, you know. And I remember Linda Moulton Howe talking about finding some plans of a TR-3B like 10, 10 years ago or so. She'd be like, I found this plan for it. And back then I was like, eh, well, eh. but now... Dude, TR three Bs well, are real, straight up. It's crazy as today's reality. So I mean, look at look at uh, look at what everybody watching the original Star Trek. You know, I mean, they they were they were probably looking at like these little crystal cubes that they stick in something. Now now we have crystal memory. You know, we have um, starting with the uh, I Omega used it first in in their zip drives. You know, and then you've got uh, you know. Crystals using, uh, there you go. This you is know. way better than anything Kirk ever had. Oh yeah, Here, here's my tricorder <laughs> slash communicator slash hey, fucking well, all knowledge. Of everything, everything. Oh, yeah. it all, no good. all knowledge of humans. Period is right there. I've learned more physics off of that phone than I have off of any other device I've ever owned. And what's it get used for? Cat videos. <laughs> well, you, maybe you <laughs> use it for cat videos. <laughs> It sort of brings everything full circle because some people argue that it's collective consciousness and that's why right. we're able to, you know, continue to share these ideas and things like that. All like one people, one group of people will have an original idea that someone else is having across the country, you know, <laughs> like I, I right. think that, you know, that's, that's been shown, that. that's been proven and studied with orangutans on one island that have no contact with another island of orangutans in Southeast Asia, come up with a new way of spearfishing for fish or something, a totally new skill set. And then simultaneously on the other island on the same day, they come up with that new invention of way to fish, even though they have no contact. So that brings up the, the quantum reality, how we're all connected. Yeah. Sorry, my, my ring <laughs> that's went the weirdest off, so I had part. to make sure nobody was creeping in my yard. And I think I think that's the weird thing. I think like if with the internet, I, I don't know. I think there needs to be more scientists on the studies of consciousness, technology, texting, like being able to feel this stuff. Like I feel like you know they say that thoughts move at the speed of light, and I just feel like we have that ability to measure it somehow. Because I know it's there. Like I I already feel it. I already know it. I already feel it every day. It, it constantly. And I think it's opening up consciousness, like on a on a five D like earthly plane level, like the the veils being lifted, like the, it's all starting to come together. Like that's, but I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. With well, that, one, one concept that I, mean. I, I thought I thought was a fascinating in the uh, the Stargate series was that when they would talk about ascension and how you know the, their whole concept in that theory is that basically, you know within your lifetime, you can keep building on your, 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 your ability to 
understand and consciously be aware of things. And then eventually you can push yourself into an ascension where you literally transcend into an, a higher uh, existence, you know, um, obviously, you know, they got that from, you know, you know, Buddhist philosophies and, you know, th th those types of things, but it mm -hmm. still, it's still kind of, I think it has some type of, I think it has a real context because look how we, look how just generally people are in their life. You know, you start off learning it at such a rapid pace that you will never learn as much from the time you are born until the time you are three. You will never learn that much information in your entire life again. You are There's a more... similar theme in uh, Interstellar as well, wasn't they? About yeah. humans becoming fifth dimensional beings and influencing their own timeline. Well, right. There's very few people yeah, that have it's... really messed with me like that. And one, there was one gentleman, I won't mention his name, but you know, cause I, I still have pretty good, but we're talking to him and this is a guy that, you know, he deals with some pretty serious level of stuff. He worked with a lot of government programs on consciousness on, 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 uh, uh, well, I won't go into everything he does because it'll give away who it is, but he looks at me after like about an hour conversation and he's like, who were you? And I'm like, uh, excuse me. You know, because I mean, we're just having a normal just conversation like this, and he just throws that out at me. He goes, "Who were you?" And I'm like, uh, "No clue." <laughs> you know, but either way, I had to. It just stopped me in my tracks because it made me start thinking, and then it still to this day kind of messes with me. And uh, he still hasn't explained exactly why he said that, but it's either that or you know, he still uh, he caught he caught he caught me. And that was weird, but you know, where I was going with the whole consciousness thing is, you know, throughout your life, you have these different segments where, you know, when you're 16, 15, you know, you kind of go through this second evolution of your thinking and you kind of understand more and grasp a little bit more and you think, you know, everything. And then when you hit about between 25 and 30, you have another kind of like level up in consciousness where you, you start gripping with the fact that you're mortal, you know, that eventually you're going to die. So that, that will actually start fucking with you. And then when you finally come to grips with that, then, then I haven't hit it yet, but I hear about 50, 60 years old, you actually go through another, yet another one where you start comprehending and you stop caring less about the things that really don't matter. And, not that you just because you're closer to your death. It's just because you've gone another wrong in the way that you think. And I think that has to has a lot to do with that. We, we can continue to keep doing that. And then maybe we can we can ascend. Who knows? Uh, that, that's, that's always been a fascinating topic for me, too. Well, do you think that's going to affect our consciousness then with all this new research going into how to lengthen uh, the amount of time our telomerase strands can last until they run out and we get old and wrinkle up and die? And get sick. If they can, if they can, they're trying to come up with a way and they've done it in mice. Mice live a lot longer. Um, their DNA is very similar to ours where if they can do that, we could easily live orders of magnitude longer. Do you think that would affect the way we deal with consciousness if we're going to live thousands of years old instead of just 75 to 100? So I think we're going to run into some problems for living that long. Um, I think that, you know, even though we have this amazing capacity that there's going to be like mental, mental issues that go from living that long um, because you're going to, you know, immediately when that happens and telemer research um, is another interest of mine. I know I keep saying that. Me but, too. Me too. Yeah, um, we need to talk about so that. One day, man. I, I know for a fact that they have been able to stop telomer shortening. Like they've been able right. to stop them from shortening. But the problem is that the subjects that they do completely stop the telomer growth start literally developing cancer I mean, almost immediately. Ooh. Like because so the problem that they run into is telomers not only affect your age. But it also directly affects cell production. So should you stop it, just stop it dead, it just continuously tells your body to keep making cells. So if you have a benign, anything benign in your body, all of a sudden now you're going to just continuously make these cells over and over again and get these horrendous cancers. 
the um, abnormal cell growth you're talking about, right? Yeah. And all the extra junk that's produced when the cells start reproducing out of exactly. control. Exactly. I, I because... heard they're working on ways to autocorrect for that. No, but... see, I think I think that first they're going to be able to slow it down, mm-hmm. which they've been successful in doing, especially in lab rats. They've extended lab rats' life almost threefold. Yep. So there's a, there's a there's a lot of promise in there, and you know it's like, uh, uh, honestly, I can't wait to live three lifetimes. Uh, I'm I am all for extending the life because I still haven't finished every PhD on the planet, so right. I haven't even finished one yet. So I, I need more lives, damn it! <laughs> well, you know what, Gary? You might not have to need that much time because if what Elon Musk is saying is correct with Neuralink, and if what uh, Ray Kurzweil is saying, because you know he heads up the AI department at Google now, I read his book, this, The Singularity, so many years ago, and if what he's saying is correct, in the next fifty to 60 years, we will have computer chips connected to the cloud network and the internet and the cell phone network that are connected to um, our sense of taste, sun, touch, smell, sound, and to our brain to learn things. When you want to learn a new skill set, even a PhD, you'll just pay a nominal fee and it'll be downloaded like the matrix into your brain. So instead of spending eight years to get a PhD, you'll get that PhD in just a split second. Hmm. I think that would be pretty dangerous with somebody like me. Mm-hmm. I would, I, it would be like, it would be like that guy you see at the, uh, the convenience store buying the 30 scratch tickets, you know, <laughs> I would get that obsessed with it being like, I got to go back to work, love, why? Because I need another PhD, <laughs> you know, I need, I need another one. <laughs> I do. The next one's going to hit. Yeah. It's going to yeah. change the world. Though. Those computer chips attached to our brains, uploading everything, recording everything. You'll be able to text message your friend, the food you're tasting in your mouth and he'll taste it in his mouth, what you're eating in live time. So you'll be text messaging, taste, sound, touch, smell, or what you're looking at. They'll That's be able to look well. at what you're looking at as if they're in your eyes from your point of view. God and forbid if you don't turn, turn that mouth. off. Actually, yeah, you better be able to turn it off. When you Imagine were talking per- about aging and consciousness and all that stuff, that's what I was thinking about. And it and some of the things we're doing with Neuralink and all that, which was mentioned also in the private chat, um, I feel like that's lends itself to that future human hypothesis, like some of the things that we're going to do to ourselves with AI. Yeah, and I think I think the farther we get down that path, the, the when I think when we realize that all of that information is already stored in us, that that that's going to be kind of the circle, you know, it, it, you know, it, when we come back around. Are you trying to get rid yeah. of us? No, no, no. She's no. over there trying to get rid no, no, of no. Uh, exit music. No, 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 no I didn't mean it like that. I've been playing it in the background too when we're just chit chatting. I kind of just take it in and out. Yeah. You know? But, uh, but you, you know, you, you bring up a good point. There's only a tiny fraction of our DNA we figured out yet. There's so much in there that we need to know what has been stored in there over time. God knows what we yeah. might be able to decode. Well, that's just it. it. It is honestly, there's more information in your DNA than all the databases on the planet. Correct. And and so I mean, what's going to happen when we're actually able to read DNA like we do a microchip? Mm-hmm. So yeah. we might be able to find out things that you know, the, the answers to everything might be just sitting right in that DNA. <laughs> Is this yeah? The non-humans code? could have stored stuff in there a long time ago. I mean, if say say uh, I had this like idea for a book, and and it doesn't matter if somebody steals it because I'll probably never write it. <laughs> But uh, it's basically a, uh, a hypothesis of how this world got seeded and how like uh, so it starts off where you think you're on Earth and uh, in reality it's actually another world. But in this other world, this guy comes up with this this process for stopping telomere growth and and basically he's able to make the entire population immortal. But the problem is is how it got out. Like before, this guy was actually finished with his work. Uh, a third of the population died because they their bodies rejected the thing, <laughs> you know. And then there was a portion of the population that died off because they refused to actually take it. And then, as a byproduct of this uh, of this life extension, they they lost the ability to reproduce. So they were trying in vain for you know millions of years to try to figure out exactly how to start reproducing again. And they finally come to the conclusion that there's no viable way for them to reproduce. But what they can do is they can 
code all of their knowledge into a genetic code and then seed another planet to evolve to save their species. That sounds so that, familiar. Panspermia. Yeah. Panspermia. It yeah, sounds so. a little bit like what people think is happening with the greys. Yeah, I've, I've heard that theory with the greys that they're basically us from the future that can't reproduce anymore. I think there was but also a Next Generation episode. To me, that to me that it's that possible, but that's the least plausible out of all of them. But, uh, yeah, well, so guys... You're done. No, finish you? your thought. Finish your thought. I, I, no, 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 no. Finish your thought. I got finish too many of them. That's that's it all, all, all relevant. <laughs> yeah, if you let us go on, Amy, we can talk for 10 more hours. We are really doing well. an after party for sure, you guys. But right, before well. we all go, I want to give everybody a good, a good, you know, when I before I put you in the gray room. So, Danny Deuces69, uh, man, uh, where can they find you? Uh... Probably on Twitter. <laughs> Sweet. We'll see you there, man. I'll put you in the gray room and then we'll bring well, you back I'll up afterwards. I'll, I'll be lurking. <laughs> All right. We like that. We love it. We love it. <laughs> All right. John Music. Man, where can we find where can we wait wait we gotta do this little way. That's how we do it here. This little cool way oh, where dude. I forgot about this way. I forgot after this whole show. I forgot this cool little way. Where can everybody find you? Oh, it's right there in the pink description box right there. Oh. That's my Twitter handle right there. <laughs> awesome, dude. I'm gonna put you in the gray room. Finally, come follow me over there. Yeah, follow me. <laughs> you guys go follow him. Okay, Gary, where can they find you? All over the place. Just go it's online. <laughs> Just go online, UAPX. Actually, but before Gary goes, I'm going to cede my time. Uh, I'd like to hear one last thing about the home base program. Uh, All right. So the home base program is a program for PTS vets with PTSD and yes. uh, helping helping us cope with the everyday reality of civilians. Um, I say it that way on purpose because that's my, my one of my biggest frustrations is 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 not agreeing with anything you do. <laughs> so. Uh, there, you know, you guys get to see this this exterior that I project, but what happens is da uh, daily, all day long, we're always battling with uh, bouts of rage, bouts of uh, anger, um, uh, OCD complexes. Uh, we're dealing with all all kinds of uh, various things because of PTSD. Um, it makes our lives very difficult to live. And uh, this program is, uh, it, it's, it's come very highly recommended by a shipmate of mine. Um, so I decided to go ahead and apply to it and I got accepted into it. So, uh, you know, I look forward to uh, reporting to everybody, you know, uh, on this program and how good it is and, you know, how well it goes. And, you know, I, I encourage uh, my shipmates and, and fellow vets to, if you're struggling, ask for help. You know, you're not alone. You don't have to suck it up buttercup anymore. You're done. You've done your service. That's it. Please, you know, ask, beg, whatever you need. Even just reach out to me. If I'm the only person you feel comfortable talking to, you can find me on Twitter, DM me. I'll talk to anybody if, if you're having issues. So um, that's all. I'm not going to take up more, any more time. Well, okay, Gary, thanks so much for... They can find out more from homebase.org. Is that right? I believe, yeah, it's homebase.org. If you uh, if you go on Twitter, uh, follow me. Uh, I've made several posts about it over the last 24 hours. Um, and then I'm also, starting Tuesday night, I'm going to go live with, you know, daily reports on how things are going. So, so uh, if anybody has questions, anybody wants to reach out, you know, um, I can get you in contact with these people, get you started with the process of it and uh, anything for a fellow vet. So. Thank awesome. You I put the sir. link to home base into the chat too, guys. So go check that out. Thanks Gary so much for all your do you do, man. You're super inspiration to us. I'm, I'm going to see you just in a second here. And then we've got Enzo. What's up, friend? Where can they find you? Right Twitter. Here. Look at you. So organized. Well, man, it's, it's because thanks I for jumping my on, time man. Gary. Thanks for having me. And I'll <laughs> Thank see you. Later. I'll see you in a second. And then Deb, where can they find you? I'm like everywhere now. I'm on Facebook. You are. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. But I really would like people to use um, 
the UFO connector.com to find everybody. Oh, I got to go check that out. The UFO yeah, connector. I, yeah. I, I just put everything I find there now and I find stuff every day. So that's a great place Sweet. for people to find everybody. <laughs> yes. So oh, Deb, I love you so much. I'm going to put you in the gray room and do my little outro and then I'll be back there and we will have a party. All right. Wow. You guys, I, uh, Never knew what to expect before any of these shows happen. I I think I know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, I think I wake up and I say, hey, I think I know what's going to happen on this show. And I never do. It's always some sort of amazing thing comes out, you guys. Because I don't know how you guys got here. Yes, I didn't. First Lore Audio, I love you. Wrote all the tracks to Alien Girl. I mean, I, I don't really understand you found yourself here, you guys, because we had all sorts of people and fun and things just roll through the chat, roll through the StreamYard link, consciousness, UAPs, UFOs, orbs, shadow people. We covered it all tonight, you guys. Because there's some serious stuff that's going on out there. Maybe we're not talking about it enough. Maybe we're second guessing ourselves. Did I see an alien? Did I see a shadow person? Maybe you did. Because if we've got skinwalkers at the Pentagon coming out and Harry Reid saying all this stuff, I mean, we gotta rethink all of our experiences if you ask me. Because today, you guys, we were broadcasting here live and alive in the middle of the desert, in the heart of alien country. And one day, you guys, it's all gonna come out. And they're gonna say they always knew. And you're gonna say, no, I knew too, because I was listening to Alien Girl 111. Lando, thank you so much for coming to the show. Danny Do 69 thanks for jumping on, sharing your thoughts man crack magic oh man i hope you jump on dude um and we've got bob marley always a pleasure to see you so thank you so much you guys to each and every one of you i love you guys all more than you could possibly know i will be doing my first new show this tuesday in america tomorrow monday's martin luther king day so i'm just gonna kind of chill and kick back but i will see you guys all on tuesday morning love you so much Love you, Brenda Blake. All right, guys. Peace.